Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Chang Gang Podcast. This is episode 45 featuring Isaac, aka Papa Bear Sunny. Isaac, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for dedicating time for this. What's hey, good, yo, man? Let's get it. What's good? It's good. What's cracking? What's good? What's good? Let's get it. Hey, yo, let's get it. Let's get it. All right. So, <laughs> folks, everyone in chat, thank you so much for tuning in. There are two commands for this podcast. The first one is exclamation podcast. And in short, basically, I like to do podcasts with my Twitch streamer friends to get to know them on a more personal level because I love listening to life stories and it's a way to just get to know them better for you guys and me. The second one is exclamation guest. Feel free. Oh, shoot. I, I need to fix the, the thing. Simon, you got it. Yeah, my bad, my bad. But his Twitch link is there, Papa Bear Sunny, if you guys want to drop him a follow. It's supposed to say Isaac. And, other than that, this is episode 45. <laughs> episode 45, you guys can see the panel on the top right. On the bottom right, you can see both of our Instagram handles. Feel free to drop follows if you'd like. Alright, we're gonna jump right into it with some <clears throat> opening questions. I, I... Okay, Isaac, let's start things off with you giving an introduction about yourself and include some of your hobbies and interests. Um, I'm really simple. I'm a simple guy. I just, I guess, the question, what was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, brief, to... <laughs> brief, <laughs> brief introduction about yourself and you could tell us some of your hobbies and interests. Oh, um, uh, I'm just a uh, hi. My name is Isaac, I guess. Um, I mean, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't have much stuff, but I used to, I guess this is a fun fact. I used to rap back then when I was younger. I used to be a rapper, so I used to just rap, make a lot of songs and just, uh, yeah, that's it. I like music <laughs> and I like making people laugh. I like laughing. Um, yeah. That's much about it. There's really nothing much about me. Here, let's get it. Okay, okay. So, how would you describe your own personality? My personality? Um, very bright. Very bright. Very uplifting. There are times I do get toxic. You know, I'm human, right? Like, we're all human. But I try not to... Try not to be negative. Because, look, the, the world has too much hate. The world has too much hate. And I try to... I try to be the best. Try to give as much love as I can. You know, uh, I guess, what, does that answer that question? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I hope that answers it. <clears throat> of course. That's you describing yourself. Yes. And yeah. would you say you're more of an introvert or an extrovert? Uh, explain. <laughs> like, do you feel more closed <laughs> off or is it easier for you to, like, talk to people and to, like, get to know people? I think like really, shy versus I th outgoing. I think it's really it really depends on my mood, but I think I'm more of an outgoing person. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm more I'm more of a like a life of the party type of kind of person. If you catch my drift. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. Oh, sorry. It's because I'm shaking the, <laughs> the desk. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna go back to the beginnings. All right, so. Start from even when you were born. What was life like for you? Give us a good overview. Uh, well, so I was born in Korea. Uh, okay. I came here when I was six. Uh, in Korea, it was just more like uh, you know, like I I was very adventurous when I was. I just remember. I just remember this. I was very adventurous, and um, I was very shy. I was very shy when I meet. Like I I didn't like. Okay, I, I, I just want to let you know I stutter a lot. I mumble a lot, but I try not to mumble and stutter a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I was young, I was more uh, more of a... Is, is that an extrovert? So it's more like shy and stuff. I didn't like meeting... Oh, new introvert. People. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I, don't, I didn't like meeting new people. I just, you know, I just only stuck with people I knew that I was close with. Um, but I, I do remember laughing a lot. And... Yeah, I mean that that was me back then. Oh, I do remember this. I uh, so every uh, so I, I went to this preschool, and then at the end of the school, at this end of the school, we had this uh, like we had like all the uh, family come in, 
and the kids will be like, oh, what do you want? What do you want to be? I know it's, I, I don't know if this is useless information, but I just remembered this. But um, so they they will ask the kids, uh, what they wanted to be grow up, and everyone's like, oh, I want to be a policeman. I want to be a lawyer. <laughs> I do remember. I do remember saying that um, uh, that I wanted to be the president. <laughs> <laughs> president of Korea. That was that was my memory. I think that was like a really good memory of that, and everyone was mm-hmm. shocked because you know it's weird because I'm not I'm not really open. You know I wasn't really open, but that's that's that was just me when I was young. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, you could continue. That was in oh. Korea, and then at age six you came to the states, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So at age six, I came to Korea. Oh, I came to America. My first, the first city I came to was Millbrae. Uh, that's where my cousin lived. So we stayed there for a while, mm-hmm. and then uh, we waited until my parents found a place to live, and that was San Francisco. Um, I lived on. I'm not. It's not really a docks because you know this is like old. I don't care, but it, it's like um, it's my old old house. I I lived on the Richmond district. I lived on the block of the same middle school I went to, which was Roosevelt Middle School, which uh, that block was, was was the block was called Grillo. That was built over a cemetery. Well, I, I won't I won't I won't get over that shit because it's, it's just too much shit. Um, and I remember I also flunked. I flunked uh first or how do I say what's flunked? So I repeated first grade twice because when I went to school uh, in my first my first going first day of going to school. The whole whole one year, I didn't speak. Like I was so scared, I was shy. Like there were times my parents would be called, and then the teacher would be just like yelling at my parents, like saying, "How come he doesn't speak at school? You know, he's 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 not he's not uh, involving himself, this and that." I was the totally opposite of who I am right now. Mm-hmm. I was just very quiet. I was just that very quiet, shy kid. And then they put me, they put me up to second grade, and um, I dropped down because. I dropped down because you know I was still quiet. You know I was even I wasn't talking, and they put me to ESL. So I learned English, you know, from the like the the straight beginning, and I went up. And I do remember. Am I still talking? <laughs> am I? Uh, do, is there is there other questions? Do you want me? To, are you gonna are you gonna ask or do you want? Me oh no, to, you can explain want... as much, and I'll ask questions based on what you say. Ah okay okay so um yeah that was my life and then um. When I, when I, so on the second time repeating the first grade, I met this Korean, Korean, Korean girl, and she kind of like helped me throughout school. Her name was Gina. I remember this. Her name was Gina, mm-hmm. and she was really helpful. She was um, she helped me get by. She actually helped me open up myself to everyone, and then from there I started learning how to, you know, I started like, kind of like, learn, you know, how to speak English or just. Speak with other people, and I think that was like the first of like how I started to open up. <clears throat> yeah, I do. That's crazy. It's crazy. Just bring. I'm like walking on memory lane, yo. That's crazy, man. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. I don't know when. Oh, I do remember this. I did. I, it's weird. It's weird because I think about it now, but it's weird that how I. I I remember I tried to um. You know how in like elementary school or middle school or high school they have like school president, school treasurer, school vice president. I remember mm-hmm. going for that. I remember going for the president, and I remember giving my speech. And I was like, "Yeah, man, if I be your president, you know, I'll make life easier for you at school. You know, we'll have more breaks. You know, we'll, we'll get it. You know." I remember just being that kid. Uh, yeah, that's just <laughs> having yo. I'm having flashbacks left and right, yo. Hey, yo, that's fucking great, yo. Let's get it. Did you get it? I did not. I did Aww. not. Um, but I think I became like treasurer or secretary. I don't know where it was. I got one of those mm-hmm. in the thing. But I, it's, it's crazy how I actually tried to go in that. Like, I, for now, I will not want to be a fucking president of a school because that's so much work. I'm fucking lazy, yo. <laughs> profanity. I'm so sorry. I have a lot of profanity. I try not to cuss, but it, it will come out. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, uh, I didn't get it. And I do remember this. Uh, I was I played chess when I was when I was in elementary school, and I remember I remember being in the grand fin- finale, and I remember taking first place. Oh, so I was a chess champion in oh, elementary shoot. school. Okay. But I remember because uh, I didn't I, I hated I hated school, so I never did my homework. 
So I always get in trouble. My parents will always come. You know, the teacher will have this conference meeting. Hey, your your son, he's not doing his homework. You know, can you like, you know, blah, 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 this and that, you know. But I always, you know, I always like just didn't want to do it. But chess, chess, when I picked up on chess, like it was really amazing. So I wanted, I, I joined the tournament and I just beat everyone. And then I, I went against this, uh, this guy, his name was George. In my memory, there were twins. There was George and Simon, I think. And George was one of the, my rivals. And I remember, I remember going against him and I beat him. I checkmated him. And then he kept calling me a cheater. I'm like, dude, how am I going to fucking cheat in front of all these people watching us? <laughs> like, you know, this ain't no fucking uh, the hato shit, you know, you know, the fucking tacha. I'm not a tacha, you know. I'm not going to just like pick up anyways. So I just remember him like accusing me that I was cheating and stuff. But I, I get it because he was the he was the 4.0 student, you know, he was the and I was the guy who was always lazy, didn't do shit, you know, you know, mm -hmm. like always like uh, failed this and that, you know, I was that guy. I was that kid. I was a class clown, basically. And what age are we talking about when you beat this him? This was this was when I was in I think this was I'm going to say fifth grade. OK, At fifth grade. I don't know what that year was. But so I'm 35 now, so we just go back. <laughs> just say you're like 10 or 11. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I guess so, 10 or 11. But I do remember. You know what's crazy? I used to do a lot of shit. Like I used to, I used to do, I used to do a lot of sport activity. Mm -hmm. Um, I was really good at it. whatever I did. I was really good at it. But I never like pursued it. You know, like I used to draw. I used to draw, and I used to be fucking like. I used to be Picasso straight up, you know, I, I think I was really cracked at everything that I did. But as I got older, I started, um, I started becoming lazy. <laughs> My Korean blood just, just kicked in. I was like, nah, I'm lazy. I don't want to do this no more, you know? <laughs> and mm -hmm. I just lived my life like that. And I went to, so, you know, oh, I remember this one. I remember, cause I used to, I'm really bad at math. The only good, only good math I'm good at is money and some other shit. But I really hate math. Uh, I was good at math. Oh, elementary. It's elementary school. So I'm, this is how I passed my multiplication test. <clears throat> there was a wall right here. And the teacher was uh, the teacher was sitting, uh, standing right here. Behind him was a poster of the multiplication table. And it, and I was right here. And then he would give me like certain like, like 9 plus 9. I'd be like, oh, 9 plus 9. 81 you know <laughs> that's how i got by you know i was just really you know i just i i kind of i cheated you know <laughs> that was me <laughs> you know that's how i live by i just didn't want to i never want i hate studying i fucking hate studying i hate school yo i'm telling you me me and school broke up when i was 18 i said i can't i can't be with your girl we just we just gotta go separate ways so i broke up you know that's mm -hmm. that's going to 18 and stuff <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember that. I do remember that. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. It's, yo, it's crazy. I'm walking down memory lane. Yo, it's fucking crazy. And I'm playing this. Yo, I'm, I'm on the uh, background. I'm playing like fucking Korean sad songs. It's kind of like getting me the feels and shit, yo. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Let me yeah. ask you specific questions before you proceed. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Uh huh. All right. So we're still talking about the backstory, right? Your what was your relationship like with your parents and if you have siblings? Um, back then versus bad. now. Very bad back then. I think it was pretty bad. Um, I think it was pretty bad. Me and my dad, I mean, my, me and my brother did not. I mean, there are times we we'll go along with each other. But so so my uh, so my brother, like, like, I don't know. Uh, so me and my brother fought a lot. And me, I'm a very very uh, well back then i was very prideful but also i was very very stubborn i'm still stubborn but not to up to par where, when i was young so when he would kick my ass i would just i'll tell stuff like oh you hit like a fucking grandma that's all you got and of course he'll beat my ass like even more you know but you know i i, I had this thing where i never gave up like i always stood my ground i don't give a fuck who you were i was still my ground i was very rebellious i was like the most rebellious child I think there ever was at that time. And I know like, um, I do remember this part where um, I think it was, I, I'm not sure if it was middle school, I think it was high school. It was high school where, um, I'm sorry, did I cut your question too short? It, it, no, 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 I'm just trying to get a better understanding of what your relationship was like with your parents and your siblings. 
Okay, okay, I was like, just making sure. So, I mean, look, don't get me wrong. Like, I was always there for my brother if shit went down, if someone likes, you know, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. But at home, it was more like, it was more like, um, I mean, like I said, there were good times, but I don't think my relationship with my brother was that close. Like, I don't think. What was the age gap? Him. Uh, six years. We're six years up. Like, right. he's older than you? He's older than me. He's older Got than it. Me. Yeah, he's my older brother. He's my young. Yeah, he's my hell. And then my mom and my dad. I mean, I don't know. I just I do remember going through the going through things where I just thought my parents didn't love me. I know they did. As I grow older, I see it, you know. But when I was young, I didn't know. So that kind of like damaged me a lot, a lot when I was growing up. Like that uh, damaged me a lot growing up. I think around like middle school, high school time. That's when I felt that shit. Mm -hmm. I think it's because they were trying to. They were. They were trying to be as strict, but they were kind of strict. You know, Korean parents are kind of fucking strict, you know? How about traditional parents? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, tr yeah. my dad is very traditional. Right now, he's not because, <laughs> you know, kind of, he, he, he kind of like, it's not like he learned, but, you know, it's just my personality kind of made him the way he is right now. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, um, that was my relationship between my parents. I think, but I can tell myself I was a mama's boy. I loved my mom no matter what, you know? And uh, I was more close to my mom than my dad. But when I got older, I got close to my dad. But at the same time, I'm close to my mom. Like, I'm, I'm close to both. Mm -hmm. You know, before, I never used to say, I, I never, like, uh, I mean, of course, when I was young, I'd be like, I love you, I love you, you know. And then, you know, around the you know puberty age, I stopped saying that because it was kind of gross, disgusting. And then as I got into, like, maybe, um, this, I don't know what, I don't know what year, but this is 2011. 2011 is when my mom got a surgery. Uh, I, remember, I don't know if you were there, but um, I was talking about how my mom got a surgery because she has a tumor in her in her head. Mm, and, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, that time, around that time, that's when I started to mature because I started to see, damn, yo, I I've been so bad to my mom, yo. I've been so bad to my mom, and she, yo, she could die. She could die any minute. She could die tomorrow. She could die right now. So like, I think that's when I just my maturity just fucking flipped. I, I just fucking fucking switch and it switched on me and um yeah i do remember oh shit this the song i'm listening to oh my god shit okay i'm just gonna <laughs> lower down just a little bit oh hoo, hoo, hoo. close close but yeah that's 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 uh i yeah her relationship her. relationship yes i'm sorry i keep losing my train of thoughts and stuff just going out of way no worries but, <clears throat> yeah um I think uh, my relationship with my parents is now is way much more solid, way much better. But with my brother, it's not as solid. L look, I, I'm there for him if worst comes to worst. If if anyone's like you know whatever, I I'm there for him. But as as being close, I think I was more close to my brother when I was younger, and uh, then when I, I'm when I am now here. And for my parents, I think I'm more closer to my parents than. No, I'm saying I'm closer to my parents now than I was younger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 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 uh yeah. It flipped. Okay. Mm -hmm. It flipped. It flipped. So speaking of having traditional parents, mm -hmm. like when you were younger, how did they handle discipline whenever you acted out? Yo, <laughs> yo, their dude, their shit was fucking. So uh, this there's a reason why I'm afraid of cops. We should not be afraid of police officers, correct? Correct, right? They're the people who protect us, right? The reason why I'm afraid of cops, uh, even when I'm just innocent, I'm talking with them, I'm kind of afraid of them because um, I think I have like a traumatizing like uh, experience because whenever I, I you know, misbehave, mm -hmm. whenever I misbehave, um, uh, they will tell my brother's friend to pretend that they're a police officer and to call call my house, and then I'll uh, I'll pick up and they'll be like, oh, this is the uh, you know, so I live in San Francisco, so this is San Francisco PD. Uh, we like to speak with you know whoever, and then uh, and they'll speak with me and they're like, they'll just like scare me. They're like, oh yeah, I heard uh, you know, I heard your th this this is a time I didn't know about law and everything. I was young, you know. Yeah. So like they'll, they'll he'll be like, oh yeah, I I heard your your you're be not behaving well you know if you keep doing this we're gonna take you and put you to jail you know and that that would just scare me you know and i'd be like okay okay i understand i'm sorry that i you know did this and then you know and and that shit fucking led on 
for like at least four or five years until I said, fuck this. I don't give a fuck. You know what? Fuck you. You want to get me? Fucking get me. Get me now. You know, that's what happened. So it just built on that. I just started. I just started. You know, some people, they get traumatized, right? And just they don't fuck with it. But at the same time, there's some people who be like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of getting bullied. You know, I felt like I was getting bullied. That was a bully to me. So mm -hmm. I would just stand on uh, stand you know against my shit and just uh yeah <clears throat> but i did get bullied when i was young when i was elementary school that was my first time i did get bullied some some older heads which wasn't which wasn't fuck i was in fucking third grade they were in fucking eighth grade and they came and bullied me uh i just out of nowhere and um and i cried of course went home and this this is the close recent relations that i had my, with my brother my brother he was uh he was Probably so. If I was in elementary school, he's probably in middle school, or whatever, or high school, or high school or middle school, one of those. But uh, he had he used to hang out with certain people, certain group of people that I'm not gonna name because it's uh it's kind of too it's kind of too sensitive. Like the touch is very sensitive. But he used to uh, hang out with this certain group, and I remember after I told him that he brought him and 30 of his friends <laughs> to my elementary school looking for the people that voted me. You know. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's so that's that's the thing that we had. We had love for each other when shit went down, but you know, inside it was it was like it was like fuck you, you know. <laughs> I get to beat your ass if I want to, kind of thing. <clears throat> but so look at me, I'm always like fucking changing. But yeah, I don't know what's the question now. I'm stuck here. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> well, so the original question was about discipline, about oh, how discipline, your ha yeah. family handled discipline. So. He said they called the cops, or yeah, fake well, cops. They, they called the cops. Yeah. In the beginning, they would tell. So, like, I in in first grade, I stole a sticker book. Do you remember back in the day, stickers was the shit. Like the it shit. was the mm -hmm. trend. Yeah. So, and I remember I didn't have it. I was broke, you know. And I saw someone else had it, and I stole that shit. <laughs> I stole that shit. I brought it home, and uh, and they, they were like, "What the fuck? Where'd you get this?" I'm like, "Oh, I just someone gave it to me," you know. And they're like, okay, and then you know they did their investigation, you know, and they you know they found out that I fucking stole it. So the next day they brought they brought me to the school, the class, and they announced they wanted me to announce to the whole class that I stole that. I stole that. You know? So I got kind of traumatized because you know I at that time I didn't want to yeah. admit to my guilt, and it's gonna be a little very embarrassing. That's that's a very embarrassing time, you know, for especially for a kid, you know. Mm -hmm. But I learned my lesson through that. Not to steal from other people, because of the consequences. Because <laughs> of the consequences, you know. But um, and also, you know, it, it's not it's not right, right to fucking steal from others. So I think that's really good that they did on their part to let me learn uh, young. Because um, I do have a cousin in my family that didn't learn. So if, when he when he was still when he was a kid, his parents wouldn't say shit. And as he grew up, he hung out with the you know wrong people, and you know he went to jail, you know, and fucking um, like yo, it's, oh man, it's crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know in Korea, like if you're fucking, if you if you're, if you go to fucking jail, it's like you're a fucking criminal. They mm -hmm. would look down on you, you know. But I don't know why I brought that cousin up. But yeah, it's just they just didn't want me to go through that route. Yeah. That's why they did that. Yeah. Understood. <clears throat> and then that cop shit happened because I guess I kept doing it. And then they did that cop shit to scare the shit out of me. And I stopped doing it or some shit. I don't know what the fuck happened. But that just, it's like my memory's kind of mixed up. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I do remember that part. I do remember those days. Yeah. Okay. And so talking about your background of where you lived, talk about mm -hmm. the diversity and like the area of where you lived in. Well, how would you explain it? How would you explain the people in the SF area, right? Millbrae, you mm -hmm. said? Uh, Millbrae, I didn't really live there. I just lived there for like two weeks until my parents found their apartment, which was in Orgrillo, which was, excuse me, Richmond District. Okay. So I grew up in Richmond District. Um, over there, um, it's it's really, um, there's a lot, because I lived on so Orgrillo, so there's Clement. And Clement is like fuck. It was like another Chinatown, you know. Like so, there's a lot of Chinese people over there, mm -hmm. and then there's some white people here. And there's a lot of. It was a diversity. There's like, okay. there was like like mix, 
there were there weren't much there weren't much uh black people but they um but uh, yeah, but my mi- middle school that I went to Roosevelt Middle School is the place uh, where it was. I swear that school was like a prison. It was so segregated. It was either you hung out with Asians, hang out with the blacks, hang out with the whites, or hang out with the Mexicans. Or the, you know, it was it was segregated. It was crazy. And um, I, in the beginning, I started hanging out with Asians, uh, like more, more Chinese people. I was the only Korean at that time because there weren't yeah. much Korean people at uh, at that time. And uh, when I meet another Korean, I'll be like, oh, shit, you're Korean, you know, <laughs> let's be friends, you know. <laughs> but uh, growing up in that diversity, it wasn't it was chill. Like I just whoever I hung, hung out with, I hung out with them really well, you know. Um, um, and so, like I said, in the beginning, I used to hang out with Chinese people. And then I remember this one time where um, not one time, just many times where um uh like they'll go out like you know go movies and stuff like that and they won't call me they would just i'll never heard hear about this until the next day and stuff and then I, it kind of made me feel like damn dude like I th- <laughs> like i'm your friend too you know like i felt very left out i felt left out and so i started kind of like drifting apart from that crew and mm-hmm. i started hanging out with people that actually kind of accepted me and like always hit me up and those race a race that I you know back in the days it was all about race you know second grade and shit right so I hung out with uh my so they're like a brother from another mother they were you know my my uh my um they were what what were they fucking they were like fucking African American I think they're African I'm not sure they never really gave me the race so they knew I was crazy but anyways uh, I I used to hang out with them you know because they will always call me up they'll always come to my house ring the doorbell fucking hated it I liked the attention but I fucking hated it because they'll fucking ring the door doorbell at six fucking in the morning because i think they you know like different race different tra- tradition i i honestly believe that because i've seen it you know happen so they they didn't give fuck about my parents sleeping they just wanted me so they'll just ring the door and my doorbell is one of those where you could where you just push in it'll just be like Aang! until you until you let it go and they oh, were no. the trunk yeah, they were they were trolls, you know. They were trolls. I hung out with a lot of trolls, so they were just eh for one two minutes. I'm like, oh my fucking goodness, yo. <laughs> and yeah, I just remember it was it was just good times. Um, yeah, and I'll hang out with them, but I that's when I stopped hanging out with Asians. To me, that that's when I saw I was like, oh, so Asian people, they don't really, you know, fucking go around with each other. That's what, and when I was growing up, I only thought about race, you know, because that's that's what I was that's what I was uh, taught as I was growing up. It was the wrong it was the wrong teaching, but di- back then it was a little different uh, than it is now, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and I would just hang out, you know, with different races other than Asian. And as I was growing up, um, I would get in fights with a lot of Asians because a lot of other Asians did not like me i didn't know why until i found out that uh because my brother said this one time he said he saw an asian guy hanging out with like you know black people right just like a whole group of black people right he, he was the only asian guy and he said that he will feel this like hate towards this asian guy because he hung out with other other races so i'm guessing that other asians uh didn't like me because i hung out with a different race other than my race you know yeah. So I grew up. I grew up. Um, like this is like around high school and stuff. Like, I'm not going back and forth. Around high school, that's where I used to get in fights a lot. But most of my fights were like mobs. Like people would come. So a, a lot of uh, Asians would just come with like their group, and they would just try to fight me against me, just me solo. You know, and um, like it was really kind of tough. It was tough, but I never, I never backed down. Cause like I tell you. I'm very, very stubborn, and I really believe in myself. I believe I should stand up for myself. Before I got bullied, I didn't stand up for myself. I didn't like that shit. So as I growing up, I kept uh, standing up for myself. And um, and I guess people people didn't like that. The more the more I stood up against against others, stood up for me. Other people did not like that. The other race. I mean, my 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 you know, Asians. You know, <laughs> yo and um, yeah um. Like every day was uh, living my life. I was always like, kind of like, you know, like whenever I walk somewhere, I was just gonna like this kind of thing, you know? Okay, who's gonna start shooting me type of shit? 
It's like, all right, what kind of fight I'm gonna get into? Okay, who's gonna start shooting with me? That that was my life just growing up, you know. And then so I started uh, forming a lot allies. Allies, not forming allies, but I could say I. So I so I met a lot of friends in in high school, and we start we started making. I started forming like a group so that um so. <laughs> our group was called this 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 is all fucking it's crazy it's crazy how it came from my fucking head but so uh, like i told you i used to you know I, I, I used to fuck with my black people my latinos and my samoans so you know i, I would try like a form like a, a group so that um no one in this group will be alone like like no one will go through the shit i go through you know so uh the group was called blks um uh, it was for Black, Latino, Korean, Samoan. We used to, and back then I used to smoke Black Amounts. I don't know if you know Black Amounts. It's like those little, like it's like those small little cigars, you know. And um, okay. and that was like our motto because we used to smoke that shit. Like you know, that's high school. That's crazy, that's fucking crazy. But yeah, um, and then um, and I just felt more home with them, you know. Um, so whenever when there was a fight, then all of us come through, you know. But I. The thing about me is, damn, I don't know why I'm bringing this shit up, but it is what it is. I guess that what, I guess that's what podcast is all about. It just fucking brings up other shit too, right? <laughs> it's my, it's my first podcast, so I don't know, you know, I don't know how this goes. I don't know what I can say, but if 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 I get to whatever, just let me know. Just stop me. Yeah, you know? of course, of course. <laughs> Talk. Yeah. Go so, ahead. um, ah, oh, sorry. Just, can I drink water? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> it's chill, man. I'm telling you, this is not like a professional podcast. As long as you're comfortable talking and explaining your story, perfect. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the thing about this group that I had, um, they weren't really, um, they were really, uh, I mean, like I said back in there, was a little more, a little more, uh, a little more harsh. You know, like you, you have to be tough skin. You have to have tough skin, or you cannot make it. And you know, like, I'm bringing this up because uh, this, this, uh, back in the days. If you were, I'm not saying I'm gay. I'm straight. I just want to let you know. But I'm gonna bring this because uh, I'm gonna tell you how tough they were. Um, I do remember going to this shit though, and it was like the most heartbreaking shit because they're your, they're my only friends that I thought, you know. And so um, back in the days, like if you're gay, you're you're gonna get beat up. That was the fucking that was the law back then. It was very harsh. It was not it's not as uh, chill as now. Like which I fucking you know I like. I support I support the you know the the what's that thing you know i support that fucking if you're gay if you're lesbian yeah 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 i support that you know but um at that time there were much supports and if you came out of the closet you're 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 gonna you're gonna get fucked kind of thing you know not fuck not literally fuck but you're gonna get fucked up you know um um and i remember uh there's this one time i was just hanging out with them and hanging out with my i thought they were my close friends hanging out with them and um they're i remember i was just hanging out and i remember I remember one of the people that I thought was my brother was like li- writing something on the on the cement, and he was he was writing he was basically spelling out F A J, and that, that's you know yeah that's you know that's what it is, right? So I'm not thinking like what the fuck? Why is every why they're like you know why are they kind of avoiding me and shit like this? And why didn't put in this? And uh, we took the bus, went to Sixth Avenue, which is KFC over there. And we went. I had to take a leak, so I went to the bathroom. I came out. They were all gone. They, they just booked it. They just ditched me. And that right there was like my first, first ever heartbreak that I ever felt against my, like, like my friends. Like my friends that I thought were my brothers and sisters, you know? And I found out later on, they said that I said I was gay or something. And then from there, they just, you know, just, you know, you're gay. You're, you know, you're not, you're not fucking wanted type of shit. Like I'm telling you, I'm I'm telling you, maybe I did say I'm gay, like I'm, I'm gay, like happy, you know, I'm very happy. I don't remember saying I was gay, but you know, if they, I guess they've heard it that way. I'm not sure what it was, but um, that that incident kind of like wrecked me, and like I fell in this hole, like I felt like I felt so depressed, you know, like it, I was with them so long, and then they do this to me and and just. It broke me. It broke my fucking world apart. I didn't know where to go. Like I said, I I, I used to hang out with Asians and kind of like gave me that like uh, cold shoulders. Like, but I'm sure it wasn't that. But that's how I took it, you know. So I'm like, the only people that I thought were my friends, 
not are not really my friends and that really broke my heart and i do remember like there were many times where um it's gonna get a little sensitive because uh topic um my depression is very severe maybe i get it from my ma- mom uh, my mom has very severe depression not anymore because she took a lot of uh depressants antidepressants um but um I remember I've I tried to off myself many times and of course it didn't go the way it went. I survived, of course, you know. But um this is why this is why I preach. This is why I preach to all these new people, all these people I don't know, people I do know. Hey man, you're you know what? If if you ever feel alone, yo, I'm I'll be here, you know? Like, don't, don't you ever fucking go with that burden by yourself, you know? I'll take that burden with you, you know? Because it, it's the most, most fucking, like, it, it hurts crazy. It hurts crazy. It's, it's the shadows, the darkness. It's fucking hurtful, you know? It, and it's hard to fucking win that. When you're on the bottom and you're just on the bottom, you just want to give up. You just want to give up and just not continue. And I don't want anyone to go through that shit. <laughs> Woo! All right, so I gotta laugh. Hold up. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> I have to, I have to do this because I see tears in my eyes. I fucking see it. <laughs> I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. It's too early to cry right now. <laughs> but it's okay if I cry. I cry. It's, it's chill. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. So I went through a lot of lot of, lot of um, like unwanted feelings. You know, as I was growing up. Um. But I did my best to not give up. And I think that's when I picked up on rapping. So I started I started with poetry, first of all, in middle school. Because um, I really, really liked this girl. And I wanted to just express my feelings. Let me tell you this, y'all. If you ever have anything inside of you, do not just let it be inside of you. Write a journal. Uh, write poems. Write a song. Whatever you can. Express and you and you feel like you have nowhere to go no one to go to that pen and paper will fucking change your life that pen and paper will help you fucking continue and this is why i always preach let me just fucking you like express your feelings just vent vent don't ever you know like hold it into yourself but yeah so anyways uh, going back to the thing so i used to really like to go i got into poetry blah blah this and that and then i started rapping and I was like, all right, maybe I can write songs. And I started picking up instrumentals and then just, you know, like recording left and right. And look, I, I wasn't, I wasn't rich. Okay. I was, I didn't have money and I had this webcam and, and I had the program. So I used, uh, 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 it's like Adobe audition, but it's like a older version. It was called cool edit pro. And I, I used that program and I used that web webcam as my microphone. I used to record. And then, um, you know, as I was recording and I was in rap, my depression just like just there was no depression i did not see no anything depression you know and then uh what i did why i fucking joined the music industry or tried to become i wanted to be a rapper i wanted to reach the top because i wanted to change the world i wanted to make the world a fucking better place and i wanted to just just write songs for people that's probably in my shoes of course you know i don't like to compare when people go, oh yeah, uh, like we're talking about, you know, shit like, oh yeah, your shit is worse than mine. No one's shit is worse than 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 whoever's. No one's shit is better than this. That. Everyone has their own fucking life. Everyone has their own levels. I think it's the same shit we go through, but we just go with a different shit. But no one is better or worse than what you have. You know, I I that's what I truly believe, and that's why I wanted to rap and I wanted to just get in there and then you know it's crazy because a lot of people my mom my dad in the beginning didn't you know uh, you know fucking supported this in the beginning they didn't but they ended up supporting me because they just realized that's what i like to do but i used to go to church i mean i still go i i used to go to church i'm still a christian i believe so and um like all the church people would tell my parents and tell me hey man i don't think you should be in this in this industry i think you should just give up and i think you should find other things that makes money see it was all about making money it was not about what you love to do what you enjoyed what made you happy parents i don't know about nowadays but back then it was 
It's about what can you do to survive? What can you do? I totally understand it. But if you are a parent, do not, do not block your child's dream. Because you never know if that child's dream will be a fucking set. You never know if that would set the world a fucking better place. You never know. So I'm just, you know, as I talk, I'm going to just, so just give you a little tip. Just don't do that. Don't, don't block people's, don't block people's uh, pathways. So just, be, just because you think, you think that it's, it's not the right way. Bitch, you ain't pay for their bills. You have no fucking right to block their path, you know? Sorry, I'm a little angry, a little sad and stuff like that, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, so I, so I started rapping and this and then I, I didn't care when people like, you know, tell me this and I'll tell them, I don't care what you think. This is where my pride come from. This is where my stubbornness come from. This is where I always, I always fucking stood my ground. And I continue to go, continue to go. And, you know, from time, I, I, I would, I would like, you know, make a little mini, not a mini, but a mixtape. It had like fucking, it had like fucking 20, 20, 20 tracks, 20 tracks. And, um, and like, you know, like, I just remember like after this, uh, this, this album or whatever, this mixtape that I had made, um, I, um, I stopped, I took a break. I took a break. I was like, I'm gonna take a two two weeks break. I think I did what I did, what I had to do. I had the wrong wrong mindset. And um, at that time, I was doing drugs. I was doing a lot of drugs. And this break just continued on. I never, like, I never went back to music. Like, I think I went on, I went to hide this for like fucking maybe 15 years, 10 years, 10, 15 years. And then mm-hmm. I try to go back. And yo, know, when you when you're when you're so into one thing and then you take this a long gap of break and you try to go back to the thing you were really good at it's gonna be tough so so when people when go you know everyone go to shit and everyone like whatever the work they're working on they will take a break i support it i support you taking breaks but don't take too much of a comfortable break once you get comfortable get the fuck out of that and go back to the shit you you've been working on because if you miss that chance you're gonna lose so much opportunity i lost so many opportunities i could have been i could have been bigger than bigger <laughs> that's what she said but uh, i could have been uh i couldn't i could have been bigger than what i am right now i could have i could have reached more you know more further than what i am but i took a different route and you know, I, I i thought that was you know i just it was too hard. It was tough. Like I said, everything is tough. But and then uh, 10, 10, 12, 15 years—I don't know how many years—I uh, came back. I so I met. I met um, I, at that time. So when I was working out, my you know. So, so when I used to rap, I used to go out. So like I used to like I used to perform here and there. You know, like like people would say, "Oh, this is like, my ex." So it was like, "Oh yeah, there's a talent show. They're out of contestants. Can you go?" And it was like two weeks, two weeks before the you know talent show. And I was like, "All right, fuck it, I'll do it." I did it, you know, perform there and then perform this, perform at this church, perform here and there. Like, it used to be all my shit, you know, it used to be all my shit. And like, I will make, I will make at least, at least two, two at most 10 songs a day, every fucking day. Like, I would just like continue to produce my shit. It was kind of tough because it's really tough writing the lyrics, organizing the song, getting the beat and producing it on your own and just like, just recording, you know, just after and after. It's, it was really tough. It was really tough. I think that's why I took this uh, break, you know, this long hiatus and, and drugs popped in and then, you know, blah, blah, you know, but, um, yeah, um, I do, yo, it's crazy how I'm talking about this and shit. So, uh, so I met this guy named, uh, I met this guy named Trillin. I'm, you know, he's, he, his name is Trillin. He's, uh, that's his rapper name. He's on Spotify. If you want to check him out, <laughs> uh, his album is humble in my blood. I really support this guy and cause he supports me the way I support him. He's like my brother from another mother. And he's the one who always like, you know, try to get me back in music. Hey man, you should go back to music. Let's get back, let's get back, you know. And back for us, when he, when he takes a break, I go, yo, when are you gonna take, when you when you gonna start doing music? You should get it back, get it back. But anyways, uh, uh, he brought me back and then I started doing more songs. And then um, it, it wasn't, it wasn't as crazy. It wasn't as serious. It wasn't as like, uh, like how I used to do it. Cause you know, look, I took a long break and I tried to come back, right? Making, making a, Making one song, 
took me like fucking uh maybe like three years three years one fucking song three fucking years but um i was just happy that i made this and i know i fucking improved because uh and also growing up you know when you're rapping i didn't have a lot of people were kind of like like right on me oh you're so good oh this was so good and i'll be telling them can you just keep it honest with me i need i need criticism i need feedbacks i need good feedbacks you know and they'll be like oh they, they just didn't want to hurt my feelings i i fucking get that it's chill right but i couldn't improve like that so i would post my music on the online like but back then there was myspace music there was makeshift online uh there was uh there was SoundCloud and there was other stuff. I'm not gonna name the other stuff because I feel like I'm gonna <laughs> look it up and stuff. I don't wanna, I don't want you to listen to the old school. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, lot of, uh, a lot of dirt in that, and then those, in those old school songs, you know. So um, I'm gonna look it up. But uh, um, yeah. So like, oh, this is fucking. So like, um, fuck. I just lost my train of thought. Look at this, man. But like I said, don't do drugs, y'all. Do you know, you see what drugs do to you? It caught up to me. It makes me forget. It makes me forget all the things that I was talking about. And it's just like, it's just, that's how I am, what I am. Uh, I'm letting you guys know, don't do to, if, I mean, I'm not going to tell you something. I'm, I'm not going to be a hypocrite, but what I'm saying, just don't do enough to damage your future. Your future is what you need. You know, you might not see it. I never saw my future. I thought I was going to be dead by 35. I fucking thought I never not I never not I never thought I'll make it to over here. I thought I was gonna die. I thought I was either gonna off myself or I thought I was gonna just get shot or something, you know. So it, 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 I never pictured myself being in this. So I'm telling you guys, whoever's listening, whoever's watching this, do not do not set do not set a fucking uh do not fucking close down your fucking future now just because you don't see it. It's what I'm trying to say, you know. Just keep, just continue, continue to go for what you, you don't believe it right now, but I fucking believe it. you guys can fucking make it. If, if you keep, con if you can think it, oh, I'm not going to make it. Oh, I suck. I suck. No, motherfucker. You're improving. Everyone's fucking improving. And, um, just continue on believing yourself. If no one believes you, who the fuck going to believe you? You yourself going to believe you, sir. Believe yourself. So believe in yourself and continue to, uh, rock on, continue to get on. And you know, Wilson got your support. Wilson is a very good supporter. If you ain't got Wilson, if you ain't following Wilson, you're, you're slacking, yo. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, duh, as I was saying, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just, it's coming out. You're good, you're good. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm so glad for people like you, you know, who give people, other people chances to meet other people. Like I said, remember uh, uh, remember last time you were in my stream, I told you, you're like a fucking bridge, man. You are the bridge. Look, man, I haven't, I wouldn't have met any of these people if I did not know you. I, if I didn't know you, I would not have met all these good, great, amazing people. I would not. And because of you, look, everyone just, everyone's growing. You make the teamwork. Man, you make the dream work because... You are the team. Wait, what? Huh? Hello? <laughs> Sorry, English. <laughs> all right, there. All right, there. Let's 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 go back to your life right now. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this. Uh, yeah. So that was my life. Hey, give me questions. I need a question. Okay. Here. <laughs> so, drugs took a big toll on your life. Oh hell yeah! Fuck How did yeah. you climb out of that and escape from it? It, well, a lot of my friends were telling me not to do drugs. Of course, they were like just on me, on my ass about it. But yo, I'm stubborn. I keep doing it. I keep doing it. And I don't know. I just one day, I just just got an epiphany, drug epiphany or whatever that she's called. And I started seeing myself. And I was like, shit, I ain't doing jack shit with my life. All my friends are like over here. And I'm just over here just doing drugs. The fuck am I doing in my life? And I think that's when I get back to music. When I got back to music. The music is the shit that got me going. The mu music, that's why I know music is something to do with my life. I know something about music. I know something about music is gonna get me go through. It's, it's gonna get me through. Like my mom, her her dream was, you know, to be a fucking singer. My, <laughs> my brother's dream was to be a fucking singer. Me, not a singer, but you know, maybe around that, maybe a rapper, singer, a producer, producer. 
Oh, I do remember growing up, uh, like when I was rapping, I remember there were a lot of uh, people who rapped, but they didn't really get that recognition. The recognition, rec, recognition, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, um, I, me, I knew a lot of people because me, I always put my name out there, you know, and I and I'll meet new people. That's that's who I am. And so I would like connect other people, and I, and I was just like bring them together. I'd be like, oh, you rap? Oh shit, you like you like rapping? All right, let me put this for you. Let's do a song, and then let's put it up. And then you know, I was I was that guy because I I didn't I didn't want wasted talents to go wasted. Wait, wasted talents? Wait, I didn't want talents to go wasted. You know, I wanted them to also grow too. You know, so I was more I'm more of a guy where um I'll help you because. I'll help you first before I help me, kind of thing, you know. So I think that's where it kind of like just kind of. Uh, so I was doing it for me, me, you know, just get there first and that type of thing. But as life goes on, meet new people, isn't that? I started helping other people. I started kind of forgetting about myself, my fucking goal. I started putting my goal aside. At the same time, still there, but I was helping other people out and trying to get them to to reach whatever they can reach. You know, I was trying to be the moral support, be the best support I can do. I, I just remember just yeah that's that's crazy yo such a nice guy you were what happened <laughs> who hurt you <laughs> but yeah <laughs> I need yo <laughs> but yeah yeah that was uh that was that was my shit the way out of it yeah 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 so yeah you're, yeah you're, let you're, me let me ask you specific <laughs> questions to uh like about <laughs> things that you mentioned these are super random we're going back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how were you overall academically? I know you mentioned you weren't a 4.0 student, right? But like through middle school, high school. Elementary, middle school, high school. I yeah. hated school. Okay. Oh, homework? Eh, I'll do it when the class starts. You know, um, study? Eh, I was fucking ace. I got this. I got this. Um,. Fucking like out cut school, fucking cut school. Yes, let's go jack in the box. Yeah, jack in the box better than school. Yes, no, no, it's not, it's not. But that was just how I, how I saw it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not telling you that's that's how it, it should be, but that's how I saw it. And it didn't do with school. I I'm, I'm not sure if I'm not medically uh fuck fucking Lola fucking told me this word, examine. No, it's not examine. You know when you're medically. Just waiting think, for her to like. <laughs> I think I have ADHD, but I don't, I'm not medically diagnosed. Di fucking nose. Ah, God damn it. So diagnosed. <laughs> I'm not medically diagnosed, but I think I have ADHD. I don't like sitting in a fucking any room. Like you see me, I'm moving around left and right, right? I'm sweating because I'm fucking moving around so much. But I need to move around in order for me to just stay in one fucking position. Position? <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> it's hard. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh yeah like for me i need i think so 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 school was not my thing i did not i just just didn't interest me i didn't learn shit i didn't learn shit i i think it's also it has to do with teachers i think my teacher was so fucking boring like because i can prove you this because when i dropped out of high school and went to a dropout school called out wells there was this one teacher he was a history teacher and i hated history back then but I started to love history because of him. The way he taught it. The way he taught it, the way he kind of like gr made me grab the attention, you know? So I never skipped that class. But it, uh, I never skipped that class and I had boxing class. I never skipped bo boxing class. But other other class I fucking skipped. I fucking hate it, you know? And um, yeah, but everything and besides, besides that, I, I wasn't really book smart. I was more street smart um more of a street smart kind of guy i'm not really book smart i hated reading because every time i read i mean i read for like fucking like 30, 20 pages i'll be like i can't do this <laughs> that's why i can't i can't read manga i re i watch anime you know if, if there's an anime if there's a manga and there's no anime on it that manga is just gonna be there i'm never gonna read it you know uh so like yeah but going back to your question i don't think i was fucking i, I don't think i i think i could have been smart I think I could have been smart. I just didn't believe in myself. I didn't believe in myself in that area. Mm -hmm. I wasn't confident in that area. Because, uh, like I said, like, whoever's teaching you, whoever's, you know, whatever. If they don't tell you 
if they don't like really pay attention to you like that, you're gonna lose that student. You know, I, that's as I, I got. I was that student that was lost because I just they didn't want they didn't want to learn. I didn't want to be there. You know, I felt I just wanted to always wanted to fucking sleep. I just wanted to eat hot Cheetos, watch some PBS, Magic School Bus. You know, and fucking you know sleep and eat ice cream. Excuse me, that's all I wanted to do. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, as a school wise, I I wasn't really good. Like. My GPA was like the most I got was like two point fifty, and I don't know if you ever got fucking uh uh you know like you know you got G- you know the fucking GPA comes, I mean the, the report card comes right. So I remember this uh, middle school and high school. In order for my parents to help me get uh, get like a better grades, what's through um what's through like grades. So if you get an A, twenty dollars. If you get it, if you fucking up that C to a fucking A or B. That's fucking fifty dollars. So, so something like that. So, it fucking bribe me. <laughs> but I was smart. So I was I was kind of smart. I was kind of sneaky. So I would get F F F F F right. <laughs> I get F F F F F F. And then report card comes. I go pick it up. And then uh, I gotta you know I want money. You know I gotta be smart. I know that's kind of sneaky. But what I would do is I would just get a little pen like a black or blue pen. And if there's an F, I just draw a line, make it into an A or like a B because I don't want it to make it look like I'm fucking very smart. You know. And I'll put like a, you know, just like make a, make a, make a, <laughs> make a F to a B, you know, whatever. And then I'll just put like a C or something like this. And then I'll just, I remember getting paid like that. But just thinking about it, like, wow, man, I'm a fucking scammer. I scam my parents. <laughs> but yeah, uh, getting back to you, I'm sorry. I wasn't really good. It's okay. Really good. <clears throat> okay, so aside <laughs> from academics, I know that you mentioned you've played chess, you were into drawing, poetry, rap. What other sports and school activities were you involved with or in? Um, I wasn't really, really well. So the only, only uh, actual thing that where I was kind of on the team was soccer. That was in middle school. Um, soccer was fucking great for me. Uh, I loved every sports. I played every sport. Like, like I said, I was very, very active. Active. I was very active. You know, played football here and there, but I wasn't really in the team. But the only teams I actually really joined and got approved was soccer. I joined baseball in in high school, but I didn't make the cut. <laughs> but uh, in middle school is where I started with soccer, and and I was yo, I was cracked, yo. Fuck, <laughs> yo, it, it gave me so like you know when you when you're the first, you know this. I forgot what the fucking the position is called, but I was the guy who was all the way in the front and had to go make the goals, you know? I was that guy. So like, yo man, just make just making those goals just made me happy. Like, yeah man. I'm I'm the shit. I'm the fucking shit. I made that goal. We made that we we won cause of me, you know? <laughs> but that was that was my shit back then. Oh and then uh boxing. I, I took boxing in high school. Cause it was it was a it was a class. You know, I had to take mm-hmm. it, you know? So I took boxing. Um I was I don't but but I was kinda good in boxing. But the stamina was not good because, like I said, I smoked cigars. And when I smoked cigars, cigars are not supposed to inhale, but I inhaled every day. I smoked two packs of Black and Mouth seven days a week for about three years, maybe three years straight. Like every day, smoke two packs. Each each cigar is like basically one pack of cigar- cigarettes. So this, so basically, I smoked, I smoked so this five and in one pack. So I smoked ten packs every day, basically. That, so that was that was uh that, that was my getaway. So the reason why I started smoking uh smoking cigarettes or cigars. Uh, so my first cigarette was a cigar and then it was a cigarettes. But the reason why I started smoking smoking in general was because I was trying to shorten my life in the future. I was still depressed, remember? I was still depressed. I wanted to off myself. But look, I'm a bitch when it comes to pain, okay? I don't I don't want I'm I don't want to feel not even one second of pain, you know? So in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm just, so each cigarette, one cigarette is one day that you're you're getting rid of, right? So so in my mind, I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to continue to smoke. And every time I stress, if I'm happy, just I'll continue to smoke. So because I wanted to shorten my life as I got older, because I didn't want to live a long life. I just wanted to die as soon as possible. That was my, you know, that was my mentality back then. And I just think about it, man, you stupid fuck. Cause because of that, I got a, a condition. Every time I smoke a cigarette, I have this burning sensation in my throat. It, it feels like as if there's a furnace in my. There's like a someone just torched it and just torching my throat. My throat. That's how it feels. 
But that's a, a very expensive uh, 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 decision that I made back then. So you know, that's that is it is what it is. You know, but you learn, you live and learn, right? But mm -hmm. I, I, but yeah, but yeah. Going back to the sports, I'm sorry. It's just I keep going back and forth. <laughs> your your question is becomes um your question you my, my, my answer to your question becomes hella fucking long, but like I said, don't do drugs, y'all. Don't do not do not do drugs. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. But yes, question for it's sure. So you were cracked in soccer. You mentioned, <laughs> and I know you were uh doing drugs too. But yes, how is your size compared to everyone? So, I'm sorry, size. How is your size like as a kid? Were oh, you like a big was... kid compared to everyone? I was I was bones. I was stick and bones. Wait, stick and bones? I was skin and bones. I was the skinniest motherfucker. I looked like the kids in North Korea. Like, you know, like the people you like I looked like I was starving, like like everyday type of shit. Like I was, you know, I was sticks and bones, so I was just I didn't eat that much. I couldn't. I don't know why. I just couldn't eat it. You know? Like it was just that was you know. I was very small. Very small. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I was very, I was very, I was very, you know, like, fucking, it was me, it's me. I'm still gonna go, go through it, you know? <laughs> but that was my size. <laughs> We're talking about body size, right? Not the other size, right? <laughs> I'm fucking Yeah, with yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> I'm, fucking, I'm, fucking, I'm fucking, I'm fucking with you. Okay. <laughs> You're? <clears throat> okay. Everyone has dirty minds in chat. Anyways. Uh, I, yes, yes, yeah. So... With that being said, what was your high school stereotype? My high school stereotype, like as me. Stereotype. Everyone sees you in school. What were you known as? The class clown. I was the class clown. I was known as a class clown. Middle school, fucking high school. You know, I was just the class clown. I was the guy who made everyone laugh. And the teacher stress. <laughs> I, was, I was that that student, you know. I was the guy where... where <laughs> where uh, I'll ask the students, "Hey, we have we have homework. We have homework yesterday." Th those kind of students. You know, I was, <laughs> I was the, uh, you know, I was that. I was, <laughs> I was, uh, I was not a good student, but I was the one who always made someone laugh, someone smile. I always made someone, you know, like if they're having a bad day, I was the one who made them have a better day. You know, like that's that's the personality I had. I'm, I, I was a kid. Who'll be like fucking like they so at time they call me Isaac Jackson back then in high school because I'll just be moonwalking through the fucking hallways while they're in class while they're in class just moonwalking you know? <laughs> and just you know just air walking here and there you know <laughs> yeah I was that guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was me that was me all right uh, other that than that friend. class class oh, and, oh go, ahead. Uh, go ahead I was um I was also the only Korean. <laughs> I was the only Korean. <laughs> it's crazy. I was the only Korean uh, for a while, for a while, and then more Koreans started to come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And um, I was also, yeah, I think that was it. I didn't. I mean, I'm sure there was more, but I can't think. I can't come. Nothing comes in my mind right now. Yeah, that's okay. I was always hyper. They call me Tigger because I was always jumping around left and right, you know. And then I had this fucking yellow vest. So this is where uh, the Sunny comes from. So Sunny is actually my dog's name. Um, my dog is not here with me. He passed away last year, last year or two years, one of the one of those. Um, I named it Sunny because in high in certain certain moment in high school, my name my nickname was Sunshine because I was always bright, not just in colors, but like just bright as just my personality. I was always that guy, bright person, you know. So that's where Sunny comes from. If you if you if you ever wondered <laughs> where Sunny came from, but yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. So this is going back. Uh, what was your <laughs> mindset when you guys moved from Korea all the way to the states? Um. Honestly, um. I took it as it is what it is. <laughs> it's my life. <laughs> like it's what it is I'm just have to go through this shit you know it's like oh we're going to a new better place or we're going to a new place whatever um but um can you repeat that question again <laughs> oh like what was your mindset when you had to move you know like I know you were young so did you have like memories of that at least um 
I don't have much memory of it because I um I went through a lot of shit in the old house that I lived in. Um, yo, my place was. I don't know if this has to do anything with what, what but it, it. So I have a traumatizing memory of living at uh, a girl living at that apartment. That apartment was fucking haunted. Like that place was the place that you just don't want to be there. You know, like it was it was hard living there. Living there was hard. That's the only thing I could remember about that house, about that area, was uh, the fucking my room. My room was so fucking. My room was so haunted. Like it was so. Like I I know I'm a. I, I know, I know it's something to do with spiritual shit at the same time, but I, I've been, see, this, this, it's like, it's, I don't know if it's fucking related to what you're asking, but, <laughs> but what I'm saying is I can't remember much of, of, you know, about that house was because that house had so many traumatizing experience of like supernatural shit. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I've seen, I see ghosts, I see ghosts. I don't see ghosts anymore because I, I try not to see ghosts. You know, I don't want to think about that shit. But I see it. Like, I fucking... Pre I, I can feel the presence and shit like that, yo. It's, it's fucking... Like... Like... I'm gonna tell you, it was... I think it was haunted because... I think it was... Overly, it was already haunted. But I think it got haunted because... um. <clears throat> so, there's this... Uh, there's this Korean game called Moonshin Saba. It's like Korean Ouija board. And, you know, when you play... I don't know if you ever played Ouija board. An American one. When you play Ouija board, you open up the fucking world and you have to close it at the, after you, you know, finish the game. But but the Korean one, we didn't close it and we just left it as the way it was. And after that day, just fucking hella shit started happening. Everyone that slept in there got scissor, the paralysis, paralyzed sleep paralysis. And uh, it was always cold. That room was always dark. The lights never worked. Um, and there's hella shit I've seen. So a lot of, lot of traumatizing shit happened to me when I was a kid also. Like, so there, there are times when I, so I, I don't live there anymore. I live somewhere else. And, uh, I, I, um, I would, I would dream of moving back to that apartment and just going to that traumatizing space again. Um, yeah, but like I said, I can't really quite answer that question that you just asked because of those moments that I went through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you mentioned how you were bullied. Back then, when you were like in third grade, you mentioned getting into fights. Mm -hmm. um, how did you overcome all of the bullying, and what other fights stick out to you? Bully in it's just that one bully. Okay. I just got one bully, and from there, I just I just said no one's gonna bully me. I do remember this in middle school. So this this helped me with this in middle school. The bullying, this something to bully. Middle school, you know how there's like fucking loners, loners or whatever, people who don't have friends. Mm -hmm. I, used, I, like so whatever experiences that I go through, I make sure that no one else goes through that same shit, right? So all those all those people that was called loners or who, who didn't have friends, I would try to be friends with them because, like I said, I know it's a tough world, you know, it's a tough world without. Growing up without a friend, and I always always stood up for people who got bullied. You know, like I it, that changed a lot for me. I don't know what happened. I don't know where I got this mentality, but I didn't like anyone bullying me. But I didn't like also didn't like anyone bullying others. So whoever I was fucking with, they if they bullied them, then we'll just have a talk. Like, hey man, you know that's not right. You know type of shit. Like, um, and how I got through it. I just, I just, I just was myself, you know, I just got through it, you know, I just, I'm not letting anyone fucking bring me down, I'm not letting anyone, well, just because your opinion is different, I'm not letting anyone bring it down, if you want to bully me, you're gonna have to fucking kill me, because I'm gonna fight back, you know, that was my mentality, I think it's, uh, I had guts, I had guts, I had a lot of gang, so gang is, in, 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 in Korean, it's basically guts, I think that's what got me through, and the, uh, the shit that stuck out the most for, like, it's not that it, it, uh, the fights, most of the fights, I say 99% of the fights that I got into was not a fair fight. It was always like fucking at least six people against me. And I think the most biggest fucking mob, the mob will be there was 30 people versus me and two of my friends. 
But at that time, I, this was high school. So two of my friends, they they're so there was a black guy and a Latino guy, okay? So they love they love fights. I'm not saying they love fights because they're black and Latino, you know? But they just they just more hyper, you know? They're just more hyper. They love that shit. Cause they grew up in that area. They grew up in the hood, you know. That's what the hood was about, you know? So um so like um a lot of people try to start shit with me. And when they do, and if that if I was with them, they will be like, all right, bring your homie. And the thing is, the the reason why people also didn't like me is because I okay let me ask you this when I look at you do I have mug and eyes <laughs> like do uh do I have mug and eyes like does it you look like, like a I'm resting you? bitch face or what no nah. uh so I get that a lot so <laughs> I'll be sitting down I'll be sitting down I'll be chilling whatever and some Asian dude will come to me hey man why are you mugging at me and I'll be like who the fuck are you where the fuck you come from <laughs> you know what I'm talking about so it was always about that like so why are you mugging at me so my eye supposedly got in fights because you know I guess I don't know what it was. So um, yeah um, but like I said like I can't I can't every every fights that I got into was all that stuck you know high to me. Just the fact that they came to me because you know I had fucking eyes or because but then I, later I found out like I told you it's, it's because I was hanging out with non-Asian people. They didn't like that. And they would make and then you know rumors will fucking spread right and when rumors spread the words keeps getting twitched like switching and switching and switching and then it'll go to them and there will there'll be fucking stories i never knew it happened be like oh yeah i heard you're talking shit i'm like who the fuck are you you know this and that so but in order for me to get by i just had to fight them all <laughs> you know what what can i do they're coming at me they want to fight me they're either gonna mob me or fight me one of those right I'm not gonna back down. Hell no. I'm gonna fucking fight it through. If you're gonna beat my ass, go ahead, beat my ass. But I'm not going down without a fucking fight. I'm gonna fight you, you know. And so that's how I got by. Like, you know, that's how that's how I got by. And then I met I met uh I met my best friend. Uh, he comes to my streams a lot. His name is Kim Chi for one. I don't know if you ever seen his name. But when I met him, everything changed. Cause he had, he had, he had a lot of connections. And he has a lot of a lot of friends, you know. So in the Asian community, you know? So like when shit goes down, like he would try to stop it type of shit, you know? Cause there's a lot of misunderstanding. That's the that's the reason why people who wanted to fight me, misunderstand me, you know? So he would try to like stop it. And the reason why, he told me this. I remember I talked to him not too long ago. We were like drinking and shit. And he told me the reason, he said the reason why I fucked, like he fucked with me because he respected me. He respected me. He just, he, he because there was no one else who, no, no other people that so to the ground to the ground I went yeah. against all odds you know I didn't give a fuck if you were big I didn't give a fuck if he had like 34 PD people uh, backing with you if you're starting shoot with me and I'm there I'm gonna fucking stand my ground you know that was just my shit that's called Kang you know I had guts and you know and then anyways he helped me a lot he helped me like fucking squash people a lot and then you know I met a lot of people other people and then and then literally, you know, it just it just went on. And now, now, right now, um, I don't like to say I'm I'm untouchable, but no one comes to me. No one starts shit no more. No one comes to me. No one starts because I'm I'm kind of like, you know, I just my name's known. You know, my name's known, and you know, it's just <clears throat> yeah, like just it's not that no one fucks me. It's just yeah, no one fucks me. <laughs> So I, I owe it to my best friend, you know, he helped me. He also helped me kind of like calm down, like calm down. Like before someone starts shooting me, all right, fuck you. Let's get on. Right now it's like, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight because if I fight, then my friend's my friend is going to come in and then he has to fight, you know, because there were, there were many situations where me and my friend, my best friend fought because I stepped in. Of fucking like like let's say like someone was uh someone was like someone was bullying someone and I was drunk and you know I was high whatever I came and hey man what are you doing you know and then fucking and then that fight became me so that's the, that's the thing about me when I have friends and they they have beef with other other people I will come in make that beef towards me and they will forget about my friends so I'll take that you know I'll take I'll take that fucking I'll, you know, I'll take it so that that was my shit so. There was a time when I was drunk, you know, we were at a park and then boom, um, someone get bullied and blah, 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 and I went in. And then I fought, we basically, me and my homie got, we got mobbed out. It was fucking eight, eight versus fucking two, basically, you know? But, um, 
but things like that kind of like taught me if i go out and if i go out i mean i can go out i can fight but am i it, even if i'm not with my friend the word will go on and when the word goes on he's gonna be mad then he's you know you know i don't want that so i just i just calm myself down so i won't fight unless unless you did something to my parents my parents you know my family unless you start shit with my friends but i will never fight for myself if you have shit with me i i won't do shit i won't do shit but i would definitely do shit if it's for my friends if we're out if we're out chilling yo well if I, let's say me and you're chilling right and someone starts shit with you i'm taking that beef with to me and he's gonna have beef with me he's gonna have to get through me to you you know what i'm saying but like if someone has shit with me i'll tell you to leave because i don't want you to be there in my fucking fight even it's kind of hypocrite but i you know that's just how i am that's that's who i am you know it's just how i live my life you know <laughs> yeah gotcha so that's what happened that's yeah <laughs> um so aside from fighting just in general mm -hmm. what was the most serious injury you've ever sustained oh there's a lot of serious injuries i sustained so i can't i can't really i guess i guess I guess the most harsh one is uh that that fight I told you about where we got mobbed. Mm -hmm. So it was already unfair, so many people. But the hate that people I ha had have for me, the peop the hate that people have for me was so fierce. They wanted to they really wanted to destroy me. So I, I got hit with fucking brass knuckles. I was like fucking leaked. Like at the end of the fight, I don't remember much the fight because I blacked out. <laughs> I got hit in the fucking temple. He got I was fucking leaking. You know that's that's what I remember. That's what I, that's what I remember. There were a lot of fights where you know, where I you know just like yeah I get uh, yeah I think that would be like the most that would be the most shit where I was leaking. Yeah, <laughs> I think that would be it. Okay. <clears throat> but it's it's you know it's fucking yeah. <laughs> um, you need a quick break. I'm gonna Not use too. the restroom really quick, and then we're gonna talk about your work experiences. Okay. <laughs> okay. You can entertain the chat for a minute. Uh. Uh. Hi. Hi. I'm. I'm here. Hi. 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 Okay, I'm gonna pee. Bye bye. <laughs> I had to take off. Take off. Yes. <laughs> He's back. Yes. I got another thing. <laughs> All oh, right. It's so hot. It's so fucking hot. <laughs> you doing good? Hey, good, good, good. All right. Let's continue. Let's talk about your work experiences. You can start from the very first one, and then move on from there. I just get off. Um, first one. I worked uh, at, uh, so my dad, my parents owns a uh, fish and chips spot. Um, that's where I first started working. Um, and then 
as I got older, I started, uh, I worked, uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember where, which one was first, but I worked at retail a lot. I worked at retail a lot. I worked at a lot of, a lot of customer service places. Um, it went from retail to restaurants because restaurants made tips. Retail, you don't make tips. You just make minimum wage. The minimum wage is not enough to go buy, especially in San Francisco. So like I took on restaurants a lot and, um, Yeah, and then uh, my last job was a uh, <laughs> fucking fucking brain party. Uh, my last job was uh, at at a, a sushi restaurant. It was a sushi bar, more like more like it's in the Marina District. Um, I managed I managed that place. Uh, so what? So the owner of that spot, um, owner of the spot, he he's like my he was like my brother's friend in high school, and then one day he just caught me, like just like you know I don't know where we where we talked, but. He called me and he asked me if I wanted to work for him. And then, you know, and then I became a manager. But look this, I never, I never managed the fucking whole restaurant by myself. It's my first. So it was a really good experience to learn. But if I were to take another manager job, I would not fucking take that shit. Unless, unless, um, unless the owner like, kind of like, kind of like showed my back. Like I had my back kind of thing. Because... I, I, I will have to take control of the kitchen. I have to take control of the customers. I gotta take control. So I gotta make everyone happy. If you're a manager of one uh, any establishment, you have to make sure your workers are happy. You gotta make sure your customers are happy. You gotta make sure, if you're a restaurant, you gotta make sure your kitchen is happy, your fucking dishwasher is happy. You gotta make sure your owner is happy. The only, per the only person that's very unhappy and going through all the stress, taking all this shit, is a manager. So if you ever, I'm just like I want. I want to say this. If you ever deal with a manager, don't ever give them shit, cause they're going through so much shit, yo. Know? Uh, so the last place I worked at was uh, uh that sushi bar. That's the place where my uh, so I quit that place because I I started develop developing anxieties and I started de developing severe more severe depression. Uh, I I left that I left that place. Like on a very Friday, it was like a very busy Friday night. Like fucking, we had, we were over, we were double booked, and my anxiety started kicking in, and my depression started kicking. In. I was like, I can't do this. I fucking left. I put, I brought the keys. I was like, Hey yo, there's the keys to the shop. I'm out, peace, and I left. Uh, that's the experience that I had. Um, yeah, but I think I'm more of a customer service type of guy, because honestly, I like giving customer service. Like I like wherever wherever I'm working at, I like making whoever. Whoever's whoever's coming to that store, whoever's coming as a customer, whoever's working, I like to make it home for them, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's a very uh, expensive uh, toll on your body. You're gonna have to sacrifice that. If if uh, I mean you don't have to, but that's what I do. I think it's a habit. I'm too fucking. Uh, that, my, the owner of the of establishment that I used to work for, he told me I'm too nice, but I can't. I can't. And the reason why uh, I got d depression and anxiety and all this stuff is because. If you if you tell me to do something that I don't believe in, like like um like so if like like let's let's say like fucking um you so you're a manager so you can't make friends okay you can't make friends with your workers that's number one fucking forbidden law. But me I'm very um like I say wherever you are I'm gonna treat you like you know like your fam you know especially if you're a worker if you're a fucking uh, what's that called not a coworker but who works under you employee. <laughs> if you're an employee, I'm gonna make sure you're having the greatest time of your life, and I'm gonna make sure you're not gonna stress. I'm sure I'm gonna make sure you make the money that you need, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, emotion, yeah, it's it's um, it, it takes a toll. It takes a toll on your mental. And I used to when I used to work there, I used to pull like at most 17, 18, no, at 18 hours. So I will work from 14 to 16. At most 18 hours a day, seven days a week. Managers never get a break. At least some managers in some establishment, they have other managers, you know, people who go, you know, take your spot. But at the place we I worked at, it wasn't fully established. And um, it was hard because um, I always got to be there. Even if I had to take a day off, someone doesn't come, I have to get there. I'm enjoying my life, enjoying my time. Uh, there's one time where I'll be like eating sushi. Oh, yeah, I'm going to eat sushi at some other spot. Get a phone call. Oh yeah, this this person is not gonna show up. Can you come? Of course, I'm gonna say yes. I'm loyal. I'm loyal to the bones, you know. 
I'm loyal to the bones. If you're, if you're my, if if I fuck with you, if you're my boss, I'm gonna be loyal to you. You know, and you know that's 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 what um uh, that's what that's what uh that's what uh it's um uh, uh that's what I went through. Like you know, as, as restaurants is fuck, especially if you're working on their under a Korean ownership, make sure they're not taking tips because they will fucking take tips. By the way, I don't know if the establishment I worked at uh, took tips, but. The, I used to work at a Korean uh, restaurant in Japantown called Siso and Playground. They're both closed down. They're both the same owners, but they're both closed down because they're no. They got they got fucking uh filed a lawsuit three times. They lost it. They lost everything. They lost money. They lost cars. They lost house. You know, but just because uh they fucked with the wrong people. You know, like I I don't like working on the Korean uh, Korean people. That's one thing I just don't like working on the Korean people because they're fucking shady, especially to their own nation. You know, that's what I noticed. That's what I noticed. Like Koreans are so fucking harsh to their own nation. They they but they do it. I'm not saying all Koreans are like this, but most Koreans are like. I'm gonna tell you why they do it because they know they take advantage of that. Like, oh, he's Korean. He's gonna fucking trust us. He's gonna whatever you know. So they take that advantage. But they play you in behind, and it's really emotional, like emotional damage. Yeah, that's emotional damage, uh, and uh, that can also hurt you, you know. And that's, but yeah, I know, um, I know, I'm t- keep talking about depression and shit like that. But working, working in the restaurant industry is tough. It's tough, and if you're working at a restaurant industry, yo, man, respect to you. Um, and I know, you know, you got to do what you got to do, right? That's that's your life, that's your work, right? You gotta make the money to survive, right? So I respect that, you know, but that's, that's my, that's my work experiences. I've, you know, work experiences just a little bit in the construction too, because my cousin's own construction, you know, so like I do a little bit here and there, you know, help them out, you know. Um, But I think most, mostly if, if I'm work expert, work, work ex, expert, work, E-X-P-R-T-I-S-E, it would be in the customer uh, uh service, more of a talker, you know, I, I like to. I like to talk with my customers. Like yeah. To, you know. Yeah. Okay. A mouthpiece, you know. That's what I got. <laughs> yeah. So that's that was my... your last job, the sushi manager. Um. Yeah. You could say that. You could say that was my last job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you just looking now, or what's happening? Um. I'm trying to right now. I'm just taking a break. Okay. Also help my help out my my dad's shop. You know, like, cause my my dad's uh, shop. So I help out over there too from time mm. to time. But I, tr- I do not right now. I do not want to be in anywhere near in the restaurant industry. Um. Yeah, right now I don't want to do it. So I just like. Yeah, that's that's what I do. I just okay. just chill. That's what I just stay at home. So that's why I'm trying to get back to music. Maybe I can you know do something about that shit. Mm-hmm. And that's why I continue to stream like you know, like every day, cause I'm free, you know. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna let my life go to waste. You gotta do something. You gotta mm-hmm. find the grind at least, you know. So that's what I've been doing. Good Here. to hear. Let's go. All right, next topic. Let's talk about your party and clubbing life. <laughs> what do you have party to say about that? I've never been to a club. Wait, I've been to a club a couple of times, but I'm not a clubber. Okay. I'm not much of much a clubber. If I go to a club, I have to be drunk. I have to be drunk. I just I'll be one of those people. I'll go to the bar and I'll drink <laughs> if I'm at a club. That's what I'll do. And then when I get drunk, then I'll start talking with people and then you know you know whatever. But I'm much more of a um, I'm more of a house party kind of guy. You know I like yeah. I like you know fucking just you know like fucking just like. You know, you know, I like I like you know people. You know, I want to be able to conversate with someone. I I, I want to be able to have fun with someone. You know, but in a club you can't really do that because the fucking club is you know you know all this, you know, all this <laughs> you know it's loud and stuff like, huh? Hello? What? What's your name? I don't want to go through that. I'm lazy. I don't want to go through that shit. I just want to uh-huh. be like chilling at a house. If there's a couch, hell yeah. If there's drinks, hell fucking yeah. You know, <laughs> that's me. You know, that's that's what I like about. Yeah, I I never been to a rave, so I can't tell you anything about a rave. So, the only rave I went to was at a house party. <laughs> you know, but yeah, that's that's about it. Okay, so craziest 
house party experience that you can think of? Craziest house party. <clears throat> or memorable. All my house parties experiences were fucking crazy and memorable. <laughs> but, um, huh, shit. I, there, honestly, I can't really pick pinpoint one thing because all the house party I went through mm -hmm. was memorable. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> I can't really, I can't answer that, yo. <laughs> so you're the life of the party type of guy? I am the life of the party type of guy. This is why my friends always hit me up to go party. Um, because they're, um, I got a lot of friends, they're kind of like, you know, they don't like to fucking, you know, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't like to, you know? But me, I'm like, hey, what's up? What's good? Hey, what's good? How you doing? You know, hey, yo, let's get it. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's me. So it's always like, <laughs> like we, we get, you know, we get, we, we vibe, you know, we party, you know, I know just that's how, I, yeah, that's, that's, that's me. I'm that guy. I'm that okay. guy. Talk about your first ever drink experience. Drink, drink experience. experience? Yeah. Uh, this is, I don't remember how old I was, but I was very young. Mm hmm. Uh, um, this was at my friend's house, the, the the friend's house, and I, this I never. So I think my first drink was Hennessy, him, Hennessy, brandy, all that nasty shit. I mean, except him, he was well, he was kind of nasty now. As I got older, it's fucking nasty. But um, yeah, Hennessy, brandy, Jameson, all that shit, like fucking. That was, and I just remember, uh, oh man, so. What I hate about me drunken is I'm I'm so love like I love everyone like like I love everyone now but like when I'm drunk I'm extra love like you know I'll say things like oh man you know when I get famous you know I got you man I got you I don't I don't even know this person I <laughs> fucking don't know this person I'm like what you know I got and then they were recorded they were recorded and I know they have videos and I'm like oh you know wake up I'm like fuck what the fuck did I say who the fuck did I say to you know. <laughs> But it's it I I learned to accept it, you know. That's mm -hmm. just my drunk self. I'm just I'm very uh I'm very loving. Yeah. You know. But of course it, you know, depending on my mood, you know, like what whatever I'm going through. And also if I um if I mix if I mix tequila and brown, if I ever mix tequila and brown, so this is a warning. If you ever hang out with me and you wanna drink, don't let me mix. Cause if I mix, I'm the type of person who will Black out and try to fight cops because it, that happened before. <laughs> that happened oh, before. Shit. Yeah, so I'm I'm that guy. I'm like I'll fight anyone. Like I'll just go in the middle of the fucking street. Cars coming. What the fuck you want, bitch? Fuck all you. I I remember this. Shit. I fucking remember this fucking solidly. And I'm that guy. That's why I don't mix. I try not to mix. So see, the thing is, people don't know about this. People know, don't know about this. But I'm letting you guys know. Don't let me mix. If you ever, if I'm ever there, don't let me mix, cause it's gonna be a bad, 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 bad day. <laughs> okay, so when you drink, you're a happy, loving drunk, but when you mix, you're an asshole. Um, uh, yeah, I'm a fucking, I'm, I'm the okay. biggest dick you ever know. Got it. <laughs> but I don't think it's always like that. I think it's always like I, I gotta go through some kind of relate, uh, somewhere relationship, some kind. Dude, I remember when I was in a relationship that made me say relationship. But anyways, I think is I gotta go uh, through uh, like some kind of like like a moment in my life, you know? Because most of the times I th the days I drunk, I, the days I mix was days that I was going through like fuck life, fuck this shit, you know, kind of thing, you know? I hate the fucking world, you know? Of course, if you ever drink anything with that mentality before before you drink, you're gonna you're gonna be very productive. You're gonna be very fucking toxic, you know? I mm -hmm. think that's probably why, but just in case, I just don't want to take that chance. What if, what if it's just not that? And what if it's just me just going crazy if I mix, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that being said, what is your favorite drink and least favorite? <laughs> favorite drink? I fucking hate alcohol. A taste of alcohol. Okay, I think my favorite drink is wine because it tastes the less, the least fucking uh wine or soju is my favorite. Wine and soju is my favorite. Uh, cause soju and wine will get you fucked up. How many? However you want to drink, you get fucked up. And um, uh, uh, but and the least favorite drinks is probably right now will be tequila and Hennessy because they taste like shit. 
Like, who the fuck drink this shit? I drink it because, you know, it's fucking offered. I won't say no to drinks, you know? Mm-hmm. You offer me... I, I'm not... Okay, so me, I won't say no to a lot of things. Like, let's say we're partying. Hey, you want to do this? I'm down. You want to take this? I'm down. You know, I'm that guy, you know? Okay, <laughs> I like okay. to live life on the edge type of shit. <laughs> I'll, I'll go all out whenever we're drinking. I'll go all out, you know? Yeah. But those are my least... I, they're not really my favorite. I hate all alcohol because they all taste like toilet water to me. But I don't know what toilet water tastes like. Don't get me wrong. I never had toilet water. But that's not just that's just my me explaining what it tastes like. What, what mm-hmm. it would taste like. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about some of your interests. Um, are you big on the f- one of the following or multiple movies, shows, anime, dramas? Oh man. I mean, like depends. On, yeah, I have different season. Right now, I'm in anime. I'm in the anime season. Okay. And then when anime season goes away, I'm in the K drama season. Yeah. And the K drama season goes like it, everything has different seasons. Okay, let's but do right- a top five for each category of all time. Oh my god, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, on the top spot. Five, uh, anime. I'm gonna say number one has to be um, number one has to be Naruto. That okay. shit. That show. That show is fucking deep. Number two will probably be Bleach. Like, like. I, number two is Bleach. Number three will be hmm. Number three will be this is this is kind of hard. See, I don't. I never really like put this in fucking like l- like number of lists. You know. Yeah. I watched a lot of anime, but I forgot what I watched too. You know. It's okay. But I said number three will be Death Note. Death Note was fire. <laughs> okay. Like, I could feel the anger. Four. Let's say. Fourth would be um. It's that one fucking I like I like watching uh you know you know does hentai does hentai count? I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Fourth will be the fucking orange. I think it's called orange. It's called orange. Is this about or or my 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 girlfriend it was what's that called? See this is the thing where I forget. So I think it's either called orange or it's either called but I can't tell you what it's about because I don't remember what it's about but I do know I like this <laughs> okay <laughs> this shows but Boruto is current yeah I fucking love it because it's like the continuation of Naruto you know it's, it's, it's lit you know that's right. what I'm watching right now so let's just keep it at that <laughs> alright well, let's talk about TV shows now top 5 damn TV show are we talking about American or English I mean American or English what hello <laughs> Hi, hi, I'm here. Uh, American or Korean? <laughs> sure, a mix of both. As long as you have a top five. Oh, number one, I say number one. I say um, Kim Do Wan. Kim Do Wan was a was a show back then. Uh, it's a Korean show. It's about this guy. He's an actual uh, historical figure in Korea. He was the best number one fighter in Korea, like fist fighter, you know, like back then before guns and knives were, you know, there, he was like the number one, like fucking fighter in Korea. I will say that one would be number one because that's what I remember the most. Most, most of the names I'm going to probably name is probably Korean shows. I like Hojun. Hojun, is this all old school? I don't know you guys will know this is because you probably guys were probably still swimming in your areas trying to get to the egg, you know? when uh this dramas came out you know but um okay. Hojun, <laughs> Hojun will be number two Hojun was uh, uh another another uh prehistoric uh figure he was uh he was like the the what do you call those people with the acupuncture he was an acupuncture in korea and he was very humble he he worked um he worked for free a lot you know of course people donate you know this and that you know but he helped korea you know be you know, I'm sure he's he's a really main figure in that. You know, he's a main figure in that area. And then number three, I know there's a lot of American stuff. But I just don't. Oh, Criminal Minds. Oh, Criminal Minds. Fuck. I love like serial killer type of shit. I love that shit. Like, yo. Nice. Fucking, you know. God, number four, I say um, <clears throat> I say Itaewon Class. Itaewon Class hit home. Like, it kind of like, it kind of. I don't know if you ever watch Itaewon Class, but that's on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one, it's one with, with uh, Park So Joon and it's that girl's name. That fucking oh, I fucking have it in my fucking name. Ah, oh, it's right there, bud. Uh, it's, yeah. But anyways, that and then where am I? I fifth or fourth? Fifth. 
fifth, let's give a let's give an English in there because you know American. I say um. I say. I say I say I say good doctor. That was a very good show. It hit home. Good doctor is a good show. Hey, okay. Uh, let's do movies real quick. Movies? Oh yeah, movies. Independence Day. Number one, Independence Day. That's the one with Will Smith and the fucking aliens come. And they fucking, ah, you know, and then they gotta fucking, you know, you know, boom, and then all that shit. <laughs> uh-huh. Independence Day. Number two, I say Men in Black. The first one. Um, I, lo- I love a lot of Will Smith movies. Uh, number three. Number three will be, um, The Admiral. Ad- Admar- Ad- Admiral. Admiral? It's a Korean movie. Yeah, okay. it's a Korean movie. That was on Netflix. That was about the, uh... I forgot his name, but I'm sure these Koreans will know. It's about the guy who, uh, the Korean dude, the, the Admir- Ad- Admiral, who uh, used one big ass ship to stop invasion of the Japanese, uh, fucking, you know, fucking, like, mi- like fucking hella, fucking thousands of ships, you know. He stopped, he stopped all that shit with one big ass ship. I forgot what it's called. I mean, it's called Admiral, but I've checked. But, anyways, that's number three. All right, that's three. Is that the three? Mm-hmm. That's three. <laughs> number four um <clears throat> i say um th- this is the thing that's just popping in my head yeah. i say uh i say iron man iron man was sick that was dope the first iron one man. any of them any of the fucking iron man i say okay so any of the iron man would be great and then fifth movies um this movie was well, that's anime though um <laughs> uh, fifth one there's this new movie called um something madame it's a fucking comedian oh no nah, fuck that shit let's put Cheech and chong up in smoke that's 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 definitely a very good movie Cheech and chong up in smoke that's a very good movie comedy straight up beginning to the end <laughs> you're okay uh favorite song and artist current current favorite song and artist Mm-hmm. Current. See, that's the thing. I don't have favorite, but I'll just put I just put it in there since it's the question, and I have to answer it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll just put it. It's not it's not really my favorite, but it's there. It's there with my fa- my whatever, right? Okay. Okay. I would say um, I would say Lehigh Handsome, Breathe. Uh, Lehigh Breathe. It's just a song about you know, it's there's people who's going through a tough time. And you know, it's for you to just like, you know, it's okay, you know, breathe. Mm-hmm. I'll give you a hug, you know. I hope you're doing okay. No one's gonna judge you, you know. You're chill. You're in a safe zone. That's um, I would say that would be my favorite song. But that's a song I usually just, no matter what, will sing, like a you know everyday type of shit. Mm-hmm. You're. All right. So now we're gonna go back into heavier subjects. Okay. Sounds good. So we're gonna talk about your relationships and all of the heartbreaks you've been through. <laughs> so you're gonna start from the beginning, the first one, whatever you consider relationship. You could talk on that and just move on from there. <clears throat> first one. It wasn't. Well, it was not really a relationship because, do you know? Uh, do you know what? Uh, you know. You know. So it's, I don't know if you know this. I'm sure you know. Well, I'm, I don't know. If you, I'm gonna give it a try. It's called Jack Sarang, where you only love this person and the person don't love you back. <laughs> so it's not really a relationship, correct? That's just like yeah, your, damn. That's okay. Um, I've been I well, it's but I would I would say that's one of my first heartbreaks. First heartbreaks. Um, <clears throat> when was I this? like this. This was started from middle school. It okay. started at sixth grade, and then it ended around maybe freshman year. Uh, for I liked I liked her for four years straight. Only that girl. <laughs> but I know she didn't like it because that's a lot of burden. And on top of that, back then I didn't have game. Like I had no game whatsoever. Like it was just, it was just ass. You know, I was bottom. I'm I was a bottom fragger in the fucking game. You know, game scoreboard. You know, <laughs> that's that's what I was. You know, not the actual bottom fraggers. Cause you know we winners. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it. Let's get it. But anyways. <laughs> but uh yeah uh what do you call it uh sh- 
I really liked her a lot. Like, it, like I was so in love. Like, I guess, I don't know if it's love. For me, the way I see love is, love is two people having the same, same fuck, like, conclusion. Same conclusion, same whatever. That's what, that's for me too. That's what I see, how I see love is, you know? That's my opinion, you know? Uh, everyone has different in love and shit. But like, yeah, I remember, um, I remember in middle school, I, so I was, her name, I'm sure it would be cool. I mean, it's not like fucking, sh- you know, her, everyone knows this shit. So anyways, her name was Lena. Uh, yeah. And I really liked her. Really, really liked her. I think it came to the point where she was very uncomfortable. <laughs> like, I didn't stalk her, you know, you know, I didn't stalk her or anything like that. But, you know, like, I used to talk with her friends. And so my, so their friend, her friends were my friends too. And then they would like hype me up. They're like, oh yeah, you should, you should really, uh, you know, ask her out. I think it'd be good. <laughs> now that I think about it, these motherfuckers, man, if they knew she was an nice no, why the fuck she, they had to fucking hype me up, you know? <laughs> but I just remember this. This is the most embarrassing thing that I remember. This Damn. is why I'm, bring, I'm bringing it up. Uh, so for her, I'm, I'm just going to fast forward to eighth grade. This is when I asked her out. Um, eighth grade. Um, so... This was around December, and Valentine's Day was coming soon. And I don't know if you ever heard of this uh, saying where, where uh, it's like a Japanese quote or Japanese saying where, um, I don't know if it's Japanese or Korean, but this is around the area. Uh, a thousand cranes equals one wish. So what I did is for two months and 14 days, every day I started building, I started making, it's like a small little fucking you know, paper, you know, the orig- or- origami paper, right? Mm-hmm. So I-, I learned from my brother how to make crane. So I folded a thousand, but it's so about the end of, uh, so by February 13, I folded a thousand. It was supposed to be a thousand crane, but I folded a thousand and four cranes. Okay. So during wow. this time when I was folding this, I didn't go out with my friends. I just stayed home. Um, you know, I didn't do nothing but folded cranes. I just wanted to show this girl, Hey man, yo, I'm willing to fucking give it, give you my all. I'm willing to give you my all, and I'm willing to. If this means, if this really means is what it is. If a thousand wish equals one wish, I'll give it to you. I'm gonna fucking build this shit. I'm gonna keep making it until you get that wish. You know, I want to give you my time. I want to show you my proof of. I want to show you my worthy. You know. So um, I did that, and then and I made a thousand four. The reason why I did a thousand four. It's because in Korean, the number 1004 it means Chonsa, which also means angel. I, I like to be very creative, you know. I, look, I come, I'm a rapper, so I come from this creative, you know, mind, you know. I think I'm an artist, so not a rapper. I'm an artist, you know. So, um, yeah, I made that. And then this is me making it while her friends telling me, yeah, you should ask her out on Valentine's. Definitely. I think you should do it. All her friends is asking, telling me to do this. I'm like, okay. If fucking, like, fucking 10 out of 10 people are telling me, to do, do something that I, you know, really want, then I, I think it's the one, right? So I started, uh, I started, you know, I, I bought this fucking cool ass jar, put like a thousand in there, a thousand four in there. I bought, uh, I bought a Tigger because I found that she liked Tigger. You know, we need to pull a Tigger. And I, and I, <laughs> I remember my, one of my screen names, a, 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 my, my AIM uh, screen names was called Rough I Love You because there was this one bear or like whatever, you, it's like a dog or something and you squeeze the stomach and it goes, Rough! I love you, you know. <laughs> so I got that one, and then I, then I got bought all this shit. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm ready. And this is um, this is middle school, like I said. <clears> oh, <throat> uh, and um, so man, I try. I wanted to avoid people as much as I can. I, like I'm telling you, I'm a little bitch. I was a bitch back then. I was, you know, I, I couldn't do it. Like I couldn't just do it, right? And I caught her at their lockers, and um, I was gonna del- I was gonna just do it, but she was never alone. She was never alone. She did that on purpose. I know she was trying to avoid me. I fucking know. But at that time, I didn't know, of course, because I was just fucking just so in love with her, you know? <laughs> and then uh, it came to the point where uh, I was, we were all at fucking, it's recess or whatever. We were out all, every single motherfucker that lived, that went to Roosevelt Middle School that was in our grades was outside in the fucking, you know, <laughs> the outside, you know? And, uh... <laughs> I just remember, I just remember this whole crowd just fucking making a circle for me and her. Thank you for the crowds, yo. I just remembered. You guys are fucking awesome. Thank you very much. Sorry for not seeing this, but I just saw it right now. Fucking pivoting. Woo! But anyways, um, I remember they it was like we're in a basketball court and then they all just made a circle and had these fucking gifts. And I was like, oh my, so embarrassing. Fucking cringe. Ugh. 
but I remember just going there and I was like, I'm gonna ask her, I'm gonna do it. And I told my friends, I'm gonna ask her, yo, do it, do it. I'm like, All right. I went and I was like, hey, um, I don't know if you noticed, but um, I really like you. <laughs> I really, see, I'm really cringy just thinking about it, but I really, I really like you. And I was wondering, um, <clears throat> I was wondering about if I, if you wanted to, if you wanted to be my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and then she looked at me. No. And fucking walked away and I was like, okay. Fucking heartbreak. <laughs> but so the gift was received. But um later on I found this is what broke me broke my heart the most. That didn't break my heart. That did break my heart, but like it's understandable, you know? She didn't like me, so I'll go, it's chill. What broke my heart is this motherfucking bitch. Yes, I said bitch. <laughs> this motherfucking bitch took the Tigger because, you know, she really liked Tigger. She took the Tigger home and she put the crane and the other shit in the garbage can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't find this uh, late until later. And then one of her best friends, which also was my best friend at that time, who also fucking hyped me up. Uh... She um she she took it out and then she kept it for me, later on like later on after like four three four years later she gave it back to me she's like yeah this is uh this is shit this is what happened blah blah boom you know <laughs> and uh, like from there of course for a while it took me a while to like move on but I decided it took me one year to move on okay but I decided that um this is not the way I can't I can't waste my time life and, you know why am i wasting my life you know it took me a fucking year for me to realize that and i was just hurting i was just hurting every fucking day you know i was hurting every every day it was just like my my heart felt like as if someone really took a fucking sword and just stabbed it and i felt the pain like it was just right in there in my soul you know and i think that kind of like uh kind of kind of like wo awoke in me i guess but don't get me wrong, I was a fucking shrimp all the way. <laughs> I was a shrimp all the way. <laughs> what I what I liked her, the, back then looks was everything to me. If you were, in my eyes, if you were a fucking 100 piece, not a dime piece, but a 100 piece, you will take my heart away, you know what? But now, this is why I go through this shit. Like now it's like, I don't give a fuck if you're fucking fine. If you're fine, and you ain't got the right mind, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be alright with that shit, you know. That's that's not that's not my that's not my line for me to cross, you know. So um, so everything happens for a reason. This is why I know everything happens for a reason. That was my first like heartbreak ever. But at the same time, at the same time I was going through this. There's a, there's a eighth so eighth grade at that same time. There was a there was a dance, you know, high, uh, last last dance. I never went to dances. It was a, a graduation dance, and mm -hmm. I went, and um, I wanted to dance with her, even if I got rejected. You know, I wanted to dance with her, but around that time, there was this other girl named Anita. Was it called Anita? Janet or something like this, or something. I think it's Janet. I don't, I don't think it's. I think it's Janet. But anyways, this girl loved me the same way exactly I love Selena, you know. But I didn't know about it, and um, I remember we were at the. Well, I kind of remember. I remember because before the dance she would like tell me she would tell me that she really likes me and she'll give me this and then you know and you know like 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 I don't know things <laughs> and I'll be like oh okay oh thank you you know <laughs> you know stuff like that but I remember like uh that was a dance so, so I went to the dance I wanted to dance with Selena and they're playing the fucking love song you know the love last last song dance and <sighs> the Janet wanted a dance from me Everyone is cheering me on to dance with Janet. And my heart's over here. You know, I want to <laughs> dance with My heart's over here. I'm looking at her. But at the same time, I'm I'm very kind-hearted too, right? I'm very kind-hearted. I'm very weak, weak in my soul. And I did find that she really liked me. So I kind of like sacrificed and I, I went for it. And I just, I gave her the last dance. I first and last dance. And everyone's cheering me out. Woo, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Next day, this is what... Got me fucking like like fucking wrecked. Next day, everyone's like, "Oh yeah, man, I heard you're going out with Janet." 
that 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 I, I'm sorry, what? You know, cause I'm I like I love this girl, man. And then the stories, the rumors are going that I'm me and this Janet girl is going out. Hello, I just fucking I just met you kinda through the dance. Hello, what are you talking about? You know? So she told everyone in the school, Janet told every single one in the in the uh, school that me and her were going out. Because of that fucking dance. Because I fucking took that dance. Because I you know, I was just being fucking nice, but no, fucking and she was, you know, she's really crazy for me. And I remember I remember making her cry. Oh no. I remember making her cry because I was so fucking pissed. Like everyone's like, oh, you know, everyone's teasing me left and right. I'm fucking getting angered. I'm fucking getting angry. I'm like, what the fuck? And I remember just cussing at her. Like, what the fucking bitch? Blah, 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 blah. I remember her crying. I remember that. And, you know, just like, when I think about it right now, I'm like, fuck, you're a fucking dick swat, man. I can fucking put, yo, man. I'm, I'm just, I can't blame it on the young age, but, like, I just didn't like when people make a rumor about something that's not true. No, that's why me, I always keep it real, you know? I always keep it real. Like, I was telling my friends, I was telling everyone that I meet. This is what I was telling everyone I meet. If you don't like me, let me know in the beginning. So that later on, when I do find out you didn't like me, you're talking shit behind my back kind of shit. We wasted fucking time. You know, I wasted my time with you when we could have just fucking avoided that shit, you know? This is why I tell everyone, whoever I become close with, whoever I start talking with, hey man, let me know if I'm too much. Let me know if you don't like me because... I rather I rather us not waste time, you know. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's that was like the most heartbreak first first heartbreak break mm -hmm. shit. I mean, I had I didn't I say like I don't I don't think I was I mean I'm sure I was heartbroken left and right, but I think I broke a lot of girls' hearts, a lot of girls' hearts. Girl, you know, I just, but a lot of lot of girls liked me. I I realized a lot of girls liked me. But I didn't know about their existence. Same thing. Well, I was friend with Selena, so it was different, right? But yeah. all these girls, I have never knew where the fuck she came, where the fuck they come <laughs> from. You know, like fucking I. So I was one of those people, like, like I said, I'm very nice. You know, like, like I'm very like, if you're cold, I'm gonna give you my sweater type of shit, right? But I do want my sweater back, you know, because it's my fucking sweater, right? So all my shit will be taken away, you know. Like I'll give this to the girl. She's like, oh, you're cold. I got you. Give it to her, and then. Next thing you know, that sweater is long gone. I can't get it back. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but uh yeah. But that was uh that, that was the thing. I just I think I broke a lot of girls' heart. And I, I I feel bad. I feel like a fucking dickhead. But at least now I learn, you know. That's I, I think this is why I am who I am. The way I do, you know. I think this is why the way I the way I am. Yeah. <laughs> the but that's the most like heartbroken fucking shit that I could remember. Just that she threw that shit away. <laughs> all, all the fucking time and shit that I put in. Mm -hmm. You know? At least at least you could have gave it to your friend or someone, you know? That, that, then I'd be like, oh, it's all good, but you're throwing a fucking garbage can, that's just fucking breaking my heart, you know. <laughs> yeah. I the but I know you wanted more, but I can't think of anything. Every, everything is just Wait, oh, so you never, like, had, like, serious relationships or anything? I had serious relationship, but it was in... I don't... Uh, I kind of don't remember crying. Oh, I do remember well, that. Well, it doesn't have to be heartbreaks. So you could just go over the experience in general. I I dated this girl that I met on MySpace. <laughs> I met a lot of girls on MySpace back in the days. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Because, like, you know, I'm more of a, like, you know, like... That's my that's my work. That's where you know. That's where I, you know. You know. That's my songs go out and stuff. You know. And a lot of people uh, and a lot of people back that back then, it was like you could meet a lot of people through here and there from in person and shit. But I met a lot of people through the fucking internet and shit. You know. Okay. And a lot of uh yeah, I met this girl and then we became you know we dated you know this and that you know. But I do remember break. Oh, I just remember now. I just fucking remember it. I just remember it. I do remember breaking up with her. Me and her was crying, but I don't know why. But <laughs> okay, I don't know why. Now, I know why. Why we cried because you know it was hard. We just had to break up. But my my uh, I think my heartbreak will be most heartbreak actual relationship was with my first girlfriend. 
uh, my first girlfriend, um, she um, she and I had like a very toxic relationship though. Like, what, what age? Think, uh, it's probably like fucking nineteen, seventeen. I'm not sure. Okay, I don't remember. Um, I don't remember why I. Let's get. There's the thing is, I don't remember how we broke up. I don't remember how we broke up, but um, but she was uh, she was one of the greatest, like greatest except she was lightweight toxic because look i'm not before i was never jealous type of guy like i was never a jealous type of guy but she was the type where i mean it's understandable she didn't she wanted me to be jealous so she would do certain things to try to make me jealous and me i'm just over there ah, it's whatever it's your friends you know she'll like hug you know like and do physical and then like whenever i do something to my friends she'll get mad so now now it's just like it's like okay you're gonna get mad at this now i'm gonna get mad at you type of shit you know <laughs> But she kind of built that shit, and I, I start. I think she, I'm, I'm telling you, I was never jealous. But after dating her, I started building this jealousy shit. Um, yeah, and um, it was like we we broke up, fucking, and then like maybe like two three years later, we'll we'll um we'll we'll come back together, and then we'll kind of like kind of like just separate again, and then we'll come back together, kind of thing. But this time she's with her man, and me, I still like her. I'm me, y'all. I'm, I'm a fucked up ass guy. Me, I don't care if you have. Back then, I didn't give a fuck if you had a boyfriend or not. That boyfriend wanna do some shit with me? Let's go. Let's fucking you know squab it up. Let's go. <laughs> if I like this girl, if I like this girl and she was taking her ready, this is how fucked up I was. Okay. I, yeah. I'm a girl. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if I liked you and you're not. And you're in a relationship, or you're about to be in a relationship. Relationship, I will take you away, and I'll make you mine, kind of shit. <laughs> you know, that was that was me. You know, for for a time being too. You know, and um, but honestly, on, on that thing, but I think she also like kind of like like egged it too. She wanted me to like like go for her. You know, I think she liked that fucking that dominance. Like you know, I think she liked that shit. I think that was her kink or some shit. Mm -hmm. But um, um. I do remember, um, uh, so, I, so like I said, we went back and forth and shit, okay, right? So she broke up with her man, and, um, and we try to, we try to go back, but, um, we try to go back, but it didn't work out, and, um, I don't know, like, I really loved her, dude. Like, I, I was the type where if I was with a girl, like, I haven't seen her in a long time. I, was, I haven't seen her in a long time, right? And I was with a girl, and um, and like the girl I was tripping with, and I see her, I was just fucking throw that girl away and just go with her. That's how much I love her. <laughs> you know, that's that's how much I love her. You know, so and then and on top of that, this girl is the girl that I stole a girl, uh, stole the, uh, well, I basically took her away from the guy that she was, you know, <laughs> tripping with. <laughs> you know, that's fucked up, man. As a fucked up person, you know. Everyone got their fucking poison, right? Everyone got the past, but I just thinking about it, just I was a fucked up person. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I can't really ex really explain it. But all I remember is this: my she was my first girlfriend, and um, like we went through a lot. But in the end, it took it took probably it took probably like. It took a long time. Probably it took definitely more than around ten years for me to fully move on from this girl. Like fully, like I was always still had her in my mind, kind of thing. Kind of like you know, just just in the crevices over here. Just just always someone someone new comes and you know we're doing good and then she'll show up and then boom get out. It's you. By the time she was going out with someone else too, you know. So it's like <laughs> yeah, I was her rebound. You know, so but I didn't see that. I saw maybe she wanted to get back with me, kind of thing. You know. <laughs> How long was yeah. this on and off thing? It's from around 10, 10 years. About ten years. And the actual relationship? How long was that? I don't know. Maybe less than fucking less than six months. Definitely. Okay. Damn. <laughs> I never. The longest relationship that I was in was um. Okay, let me do this. Mm. 
nine months. I think nine. No, it's either six months or nine months. But that was the longest relationship. I never went a, went a year. Mm -hmm. Never. Because uh, it was either my fault or whether it was the girl's fault. We just didn't, you know. Oh, my. Now I remember. So, talking about this, now I remember. So my last heartbreak was... um. Get, <clears throat> lot, every Everyone that I told this do not like her. And everyone that met her do not like her. At the time, I didn't see it. But she was definitely a gold digger. This is when I was working at the Swiss restaurant. I was making a lot of money. This is recent then, right? This is uh, recent. This is probably like <clears throat> three years ago. Mm -hmm. This is recent. Three, four years ago. Um, I really loved her. <laughs> it's, it's crazy because because um, my relationship with her is is uh, is kind of... Is, is, but I'll just skip all that shit and just go to this. Me and her went out. Um... I know she was a type, a girl who would leave me if I didn't have money. I know. But it was too late for me. I do remember, I do remember asking her this one time. I asked her, hey, if I didn't have money, would you still be with me? You know, that's the fucking question you want to ask everyone, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, at that time, I was so in love with her that I was so blind, okay? And she told me. Yeah, if you didn't have money, I would not be with you. <laughs> you know, it's fucking blunt. Which is, you know, I fucking knew it, but I just brushed it off like it was nothing. This girl, I spent so much time. I meant I spent everything on her. Every so I paid. I mean, it's not about money, okay? But we're gonna count it, okay? I paid for her rent. I paid for her car, car, uh, car bills. I paid for her car insurance. I paid for her going out, spending time, uh, you know, whatever. And, you know, just pay for everything. Gave her allowance here and there, you know, whatever she's doing, I'll, I'll cover it, you know. And groceries, like her family groceries. But it's, it's, I don't blame her. I blame her mom, you know, because her mom made her grow up like that. She raised her like that, you know. Every kid, she, not every kid, most kids, is, is you, know, you know, the parents take sides from that shit, you know. But... I I've been with her. I see like six nine months, right? I spent twenty around. I don't like like I, said, I don't like count, but this this is how much I spent with her. Again. I spent twenty four seven with her basically. Uh, she lived in Sacramento, and you know I live in San Francisco. Remember I told you I used to work like like fourteen whatever hours a day. Uh, there are times where I work twelve hours a day. Once I get off, I'll go straight to Sacramento. You know, spend time with her. Um. Mm -hmm. There are some times, really rare, but I'll get day off. My, my owner would come and work for me, that was shit. And I would just spend my time up there. But every day, I'll commute to her. So I go to her after work, come back. I'm going to go to work, spend time with her. Morning hits, commute back to San Francisco and go to work. That was, that was my life for like the six months that I was with or nine months. I don't know how many months I've been with her, but it's around that, around, around these months. I gave her all my time all my all my money okay <laughs> i i spent twenty seven thousand dollars on this bitch okay <laughs> my friend's been telling me she's the wrong girl she's the wrong girl you know but i was so blinded in love that i wanted to give everything you know everything to her that's how i am once i fall in love i give everything to the to that one person and that is why i'm afraid to be in another relationship i'm afraid that i'll become like that that's why I try not to, you know, um, that's why I try not to fucking, you know, that's why I try to kind of stay away from relationship in a way, you know, but, um, I broke up with her because, um, so look, I'm spending, I'm, I'm fucking making money. I'm working hard, this and that. And then one day you come and let's say you're, you know, you're, you know, it's, let's say it's your girl. And then you see a fuck on her phone, on the back of her phone, you see a picture of another dude's face on the on her phone you know like you know and, and and i saw that and i felt so like i'm doing all this shit for you to fucking live comfortably and you have a another motherfucker's uh a dude's face dude's picture i don't care if it's your fucking friend but the thing is the thing, let me tell you why i'm so mad because this friend this friend uh started out as they just met, first of all, and they were kind of tripping before I, you know, before I came in her life. 
that's why it was a little you know kind of personal you know i remember uh i remember like uh and then i remember i was about to, i was like you know what fuck this shit i'm, I'm out I fucking came down here to see your face, see, you know, kick it with you, and I see a, another motherfucker's face on 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 the phone of your shit. Not even my fucking face, some other motherfucker's face. Fuck this, I'm out. And this is where I'm weak. If you leave that door, we're done. That's that one fucking one line. I fucking stopped. <laughs> and then this is where I started break. I broke down. I started crying, dude. I stopped fucking crying because I was so angry. So fucking like, you know, like, you know, whatever, you know. And like, you know, we stuck together and and again another another incident happened and I'm 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 over here. Like I said, we're that's why long distance it's kinda hard. It's kinda tough. I understand long distance, but you know. Like I'll give you my I'll give you all my uh, all my shit, but just don't play me that shit, you know. But I remember uh she she uh there's a time where she was talking with her one of her uh friend from like middle school one of this dude from uh from middle school that she haven't talked for like fucking years uh contacted her and they're talking and they wanted to meet up yeah uh she updated me which is fucking great uh yeah i'm gonna meet up my you know middle school friend that i haven't seen in a while all right is it a guy or girl it's guy okay um what the fuck you guys gonna meet we're gonna do together oh he's gonna take me out to eat Okay, now in my mind, I'm like, okay, this, we're getting ready to suss already. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like I said, I do all this shit. I'm sweating blood, sweat, and tears. And you're gonna go out and enjoy your. It's okay. You know what? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, the, I'm gonna be the righteous person. I'm like, all right, go ahead. Enjoy, enjoy your time. Enjoy your time. But just update me. Just update me. When I call you, answer. When I text you, answer. Respond, you know? And it was at nighttime, and, and I was going out with my friend. And, um,. Like, I, I, call, I called her once, and then we, she picked up, you know, this and that. But it took a while for her to pick up. So now, in my mind, I'm thinking, is this bitch fucking fucking this guy? You know, this, <laughs> that's what I'm going in my mind, you know? So I'm like, okay, now let's 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 just give her a benefit of doubt. Let's give her the benefit of doubt, you know? So okay. it's just, and then, uh, and, and then, like, um, time passed. And I text her, hey, um, I called her, and then she didn't pick up twice. And I text her, hey, hey, babe, uh, uh, What's up? What's what's going on? Can you you know what's going on? You know, and then she didn't respond to me. Maybe like I say about like I say about twenty five minutes later she responds through text. Not she didn't call me. She re she texts me. I call her back. She hangs up. She's like, oh, I can't I can't be on the phone. Let's text. Now this now in my mind is like, okay, why the fuck? And she's with him. She's with him. Okay, this is why she's with him. So in my mind, I'm like, how come you can't fucking pick up your fucking boyfriend's call? And you're with this motherfucker that you just fucking, you know, rekindle. What the fuck is y'all doing, you know? And I'm just going off, you know? I can't control, I can't control this fucking, the thought, I can, you know? Because it's, mm. it's too sus, it's too, everything is, everything that's happening. Everything that's, yeah, everything is just to point the finger to that, you know? But I'm doing my best to keep it together, keep it together. And like, she's getting mad at me because I'm mad at her, you know? But, um, and me, I'm a soft dude, you know? I'm a soft dude, okay. You got it. All right. You know, you're right. You're right. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. All right. Whatever. You know? <laughs> and then, um, I don't, I don't know what happened, but, um, next day happens. She doesn't hit me up until the next morning. No, not next morning. Next afternoon. Afternoon, like one or two o'clock. Because this is a time where I'm already stressed. I'm drinking. I'm stressed. My best friend's with me. And my best friend's like, let's go, let's go, uh, chim -chim bang. let's go sauna in San Ho, right? Santa Clara, right? And and he's driving me, and then he's trying to get me, you know, to think, you know. And then that's when I get the, uh, I get the call, and she's like, "Hey, what's up?" And then I, and I was like, "Yo, I can't talk to you right now." And I hang up, you know. <laughs> she's like, "Oh, what's wrong? Why?" You know, now she's fucking active. Now she's active. At two p.m., two in the fucking afternoon, she she wasn't active the night before, you know. So, and um, she's active. And she's trying to talk to me. I'm like, "Yo, I, I can't do this. I can't talk with you. You know, leave me the fuck alone, at least for a whole day." And she's the, she's the type where she won't leave you alone. She can fucking call every, until you fucking pick up. Until you, I can't even turn off my phone because what if my mom and dad calls me and some an emergency happened, you know? So I'm like, fuck, you know. And anyways, um, I, I you know I'm on the phone with her and I tell her, yo, you know, this shit is all fucking. I can't do this. I'm gonna have to break up with your ass. I can't, you know. I I can't do this. Like you're you're fucking hurting me. You know, I'm fucking doing all this shit for you, but you weren't giving me the same fucking, you know, like, the love back, you know? Like, you're just giving me this little itsy bit of love, oh, you know? Just, and, and it's just, 
hoping that I'm, you know, I'll go on because that's what happened, you know. Just give me a little bit of, oh, I love you, this and that. And then, you know, boom, it just closes. But, um, yeah, I think uh, this relationship was very toxic, of course, yes. And a lot of my friends was trying to open my eyes. It took a while. It took, I say, two months to open my eyes. And, um, like, it really hurt me. It hurt me so much. It hurt me so much. I, I could not talk to nobody. Excuse me. It closed me off. And, um, yeah, man, like, it was, I, I don't know what else to say. Like, it just broke my heart, dude. I mean, it's, she didn't, I didn't caught her on red hand, but all these fucking pointing, the fingers, I mean, I left a lot of shit, you know, I left out a lot of shit, because if mm-hmm. I do, it's just, just kind of whatever, but it's the same shit, it's everything pointing finger at, you know, she did fuck this motherfucker, you know, <laughs> no, and like, you know, like, I just didn't, I just couldn't, I didn't have the mental strength to deal with this shit, you know, I, I had to break up with her. And I did break up, but then I went back with her again. What she did was fucking smart. She came, she came to me. She was dressing like, like she dressed up so she's dressed up as if she was going to the club. <laughs> and she, uh, she wanted to talk with me, so I talked with her. And just, yo, this, this is why, <laughs> this is why a lot of guys cannot leave. You know, if sex is good, is is good. You know, there's, <laughs> there's. The, there's nothing around that, you know? You can't beat that shit, when, especially when you're in love, too, you know? <laughs> but, oh, um... No. I went back with her, and then I tried to give her the benefit of doubt, which I did. And, of course, that's the stupidest shit. Um... <sighs> man, I don't know. I just, um... I remember just, like... I don't know what we went to. I just, just, I'm just trying to fast forward, whatever. But, um... In the end, I bro- I finally... Gotta, you know, Chung each other's like, but I got unconscious. It's like, okay, this girl is it for me. And I have to break up with her. Not broke up with her. I don't know if I, I don't know how I broke up with her, but I broke up with her. I think it was through. It's kind of, it's kind of, I did not want to see her. Cause I know she's a scammer. She's a fucking scammer. She's gonna wear fucking, she's gonna wear clothes that I know I'm gonna like. <laughs> and she's gonna try to get me mad. And yo, so look, look, she, on my birthday, she got me a ring. She like, she, I, when I was sleeping, she measured my fucking finger and she got me a ring that fit me, okay? So this was my first ring. I never had this ring in my life. I never had a ring. I never had anyone give me a jewelry in my life. It was always me giving them, you know? But anyways, um, this ring, um, I remember when I broke up with her, I was going to give this ring back, you know? I had, her, I had a spare key for the new car that she bought that I was paying off. <laughs> uh, what happened to a car? What happened to her old car is that she came to my house she parked uh, around my neighborhood, and uh, first thing in the night, first thing like fucking like three in the morning, you get a call from the uh, SFPD saying that her car was fucking in fire. We go out, her car is in fire, like it's fucked up. Like someone, like like someone, like I don't know what it was, but someone blew up her car. Like her her car was totaled, you know, in that parking spot. But never in my life had any. I have never seen that. But um, a lot of my friends, a lot of my people think it's probably her ex. Her ex that's been following her and you. And who did that, you know? You know, that, that could be it. But anyways, that's the reason why I was paying for the new car. Because I felt like it was my fucking responsibility because she did park near my house, you know? But still, I don't think it was my fault either way. <clears throat> but um, yeah. I remember when I broke, so I broke up with her, and then I was giving, I was getting her ready, you know, getting her, getting her ring, getting the ring back. And I remember she texted me, she, she texted me, and she was like, the reason she texted because I didn't want to try to talk on the phone. She texted me, um, hey, uh, can you get my ring back? And I just, I just thought that was fucking cute. <laughs> you gave, you gave this to me. I mean, it's cool. I'll, I, I was already gonna give it to you, but just the fact that you asked for it back is, is like, damn, man, that's fucking crazy, you know. But it's cool. I was I was already uh I was already planning to give it back and her keys, of course. And I did my best of to avoid her. So I told her to come to my workplace and I'll be there. And and I wasn't there because I knew what she was gonna do. And so I told the uh other manager, I was like, hey, uh my ex is gonna come. Just give her this to my ex and then, you know, just you know, that's it, that's what I gotta do. And then she came and picked it up and whatever. And then my manager, my, the other manager, assistant manager, whatever, he told me, yo, man, 
you're lucky that you weren't here because she's they told me the way she's dressed the way she's dressed was well, she was trying to get me back and i fucking avoided that because i'm smart you know well i'm not i'm not that smart you learned but I, this time. I learned yeah i learned this time and i'm glad i wasn't there because i definitely would have lost <laughs> but yeah that was uh that was one of my uh one of my biggest heartbreak that i fucking went through it wasn't like it wasn't like for sure that she not i knew that she was you know like having other dudes on the side but she did have a lot of dudes on the side and she you know she hung out with them without me knowing type of shit so you know it's mm -hmm. you, you show action you show actions and your fucking results are there you know mm -hmm. so but that was i think that was like the most like it took it i just got over her maybe like last year yeah i'm time last year yeah but that was that's my that's my shit Damn. <laughs> okay, relationships and heartbreaks. <laughs> okay, another you know sensitive topic. So mental health. How are you doing now? I'm doing way much better. Don't get me wrong. I I'm I'm fighting every single day. <clears throat> I'm fighting every single day, but um. It's not as worse as it was before. It's not as worse. Because the reason why it's not as worse is because because when I was going through the last severe depression was around the time where I was going out with this girl or like was kind of exit not going not going out with girl, but around the time when we broke up too, you know? And this is the time I was still working at the sushi spot, you know? So it was so like it was so like draining. Like I I started to realize I do not want to feel this way. I don't like the feeling of depression. I don't like feeling all sad. I don't like feeling losing. I just don't like that shit. So I think sometime, I don't know when, I just switched my fucking thought and I was like, you know what? I'm going to start fucking winning these battles. I'm going to start, I'm going to start fucking, I'm going to start fighting this shit and I'm going to start winning. Yes, there will be days where I'm going to lose the battles, but the war is still on. The war will always be on until you're alive, you know? It was hard. Don't get me wrong. Uh, not too long ago, maybe like four years ago, three, four years ago, I was getting everything ready. I had depths. So I was looking up, I was Googling, I was like, uh, if I die, where do, does my depths go to my next to, next to kin? You know, um, you know, you know, I'm just like looking up all this. I'm researching. What's the painless way to die? You know, like I said, I'm a bitch when it comes to pain. I'm telling you this, you know, and um, you know, I was searching up everything. I was getting ready. I was, you know, I was getting the letters ready. You know, I had, I had. I was writing my will, this and that, you know, I was I was getting ready. And um I don't know when, but just one, one my friends were always there for me, you know, like they were they were, they were a very big help. They were a big help. And um I don't know when or why that made me switch off my uh my my switch is um when I did, I started fighting to live. I wanted to I want to just fight to live. And also, I think it's also because of this. I didn't want anyone to go through the shit I was going through. Mm -hmm. I think that helped me a lot. Because I like helping people. I like helping people. And just the fact, just the thought of my friends going through that shit. Just because my friends were going through that shit slowly and slowly. And I think that's where I saw it. And I was like, okay, if I die, that's going to make it worse for them, first of all. Second of all, who's going to be there to fucking, you know, bring them back? Remember, I told you I'm a, I up, you know, I'm the I'm the friend who brings their, you know, you know, spirits back, back, you know, back mm -hmm. and going, you know. So I'm not thinking. Nah, I I need to live. I need to live. Yeah, I need to live for me, but I I honestly gotta live for my friends too. And there's other people out there that I don't fucking know, and I I don't want them to go through that shit. This is mm -hmm. why I always talk about depression and stuff, you know, because it's it's, it's a very tough tough world you know yeah you know? but i'm doing really well your question answered i am doing really well <laughs> and i'm still fighting i'm still fighting every day the days i fucking sometimes i'm streaming i fucking cry you know that's because i'm still fighting and i'm, I'm trying to like you know <laughs> mask over it win over it but and the reason why i do cry on stream is because to let other people know it's okay to cry mm -hmm. just cry just cry it out if you're ever feeling sad just cry it out next day you'll feel better you know, I yeah. think, uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm doing really well, way better, 
way good. better. Yeah, way better. On your panels, <laughs> it talks about fighting your demons every day, trying <laughs> to figure out the American dream to live that, and to figure out who you are as a person. Yeah. So that's an everyday struggle. Everyday struggle for everyone, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I know you struggle too. You don't look. You don't look like you're struggling, but I see it in your eyes. You're struggling, dude. And that's what I'm telling you, yo. I got you, bro. You're only an hour away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, it's an hour away. No problem. I drive fucking. I drove like fucking three hours away before, so no problem, dude. I got you, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you generally talked about how you kind of climbed out of all like depressive stages in your life. Mm -hmm. What would you pinpoint as like your lowest point ever? Probably like uh like two three two or three years ago. Was it because of that ago. relationship? No, nah, it was just it's just because um <sighs> it's because um I know myself. Like I say, I know myself. You know, I'm not that great of a guy. I'm not. Everyone has you know flaws, you know, but. My flaws are so fucking strong. Like, I I've been f like I feel <laughs> I feel a burden, you know. I feel a burden on myself, and I don't do I don't do much shit. I if you if you look at me and everyone else that's in my age group, I'm the only one that's in doing shack shit. Not really jack shit, but like. I'm the only one who's just, just here. I got nothing in my life like that. I can say, hey, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know, I, I, I got nothing, you know, like. <laughs> I got nothing. Like, I got nothing. Like, so I, I got nothing, dude. <laughs> Oh mm -hmm. man. You need to take a break? No no no. No breaks. We're we're all good. Yeah, we'll take chill. your time. Um Yeah, just the only thing I got is I guess I guess Twitch. You know? Twitch really helped me, but at the same time kinda of breaks me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk more on Twitch for sure. But that was a few years ago. You found yourself out of that situation in mind space, right? Or headspace? Yeah. It's good. I did. Yeah, I so, did. So, with my follow-up question <laughs> is what advice would you give to others who feel like they're at their lowest point? I know it's hard to um I know it's hard to hear this. I know you I know you hear it every day. I know you hear it a lot. <clears throat> but um Yo, every this, everyone, okay, yo, look, I was um, let me tell you this part. I was, I was merely more depressed because I feel useless to life, just in general. I feel like you know I ain't doing jack shit with my life. But um, I it's because it's not my time to shine right now. You know, everyone has different timing. Um. If you think you're doing nothing, you're not. Your body is just getting ready for what's about to happen. You know, that's what I believe in. That's what I believe in. And don't give up, man. Do not do not give up. This is only temporary. I don't know how long it's going to be. Because sometimes temporary could mean fucking 10 years. And sometimes it could mean fucking th like few months. You know? It like I say, I'm, I don't compare it with the times. I don't look at people's time. Everyone got, everyone got different timing, but don't don't let that temporary fucking uh, temporary temporariness stop you from living. Like you, de you deserve it. This is what I tell you: you deserve the world. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you deserve the life. Right now, life may not be good, but sooner or later. That's the thing. I can't. I can't really say it will get better, because I, I am not God. I'm not a psychic. And um, hearing hearing that, 
when you're when you're at a low 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 period, hearing that like it will get better, it kind of like um, it kind of like. I don't. I didn't like it. It will get better. It will get better. Yeah, I'm sure it will get better. But just hearing that just makes me not want to continue on. It makes me more angry because it's not better now. You know, so I can't. I can't really give you advice. But except just don't give up, man. That that's all I can say. Don't give up, man. I I switch. But you can look at me. I switch from I was about to fucking throw my life away this day. And look at me, I'm fucking living. I thought I was not gonna make it to 35. I'm fucking still living. You know, I know it's not much, but don't give up, dude. Like I, don't give up. You des you deserve better. If you ain't got it now, fucking go for it and grab it. It doesn't take years. Maybe it takes years. Maybe it takes time. But don't give up, dude. That's, oh, that's all I can say. That's all I can say. There's nothing I, I, I was I, I don't want to be like it's gonna be it's gonna get better. I don't want to say that. It's, I don't know when. You know, keep asking me when. But I know soon in time it will. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want you to give up on that. I don't want you to give up on I don't want you to give up on the future. You know? Yeah, you could decide what your future be, but don't decide your future to be ended right here, you know? Live on to your future. You are the future. <laughs> mm -hmm. Continue on. Fight that shit. And take care of yourself. Don't take care of others. You gotta take care of yourself so you can take care of others, you know? Be yourself and just continue on. Continue on, dude. Don't give up, man. Yeah. That's, that's the most I can say. <clears throat> <laughs> and the next question. How has COVID affected you personally? Oh, man. COVID, man. COVID fucked me up, though. Real talk. COVID really fucked me up. Like, I mean, we all need money to live, right? We all need money to live. We all need money to pay the bills. <clears throat> there were opportunities for me to make a lot of money. But I did get COVID not too long ago, like maybe two, three weeks ago. I don't remember. Maybe like a month ago. I have no idea. But, um, um, when that, when when I got COVID and I had, and the opportunities was right there, I wanted to take it, but I wanted to also keep everyone safe. And uh, it kind of broke me because I couldn't make the money that I commit. You know, I mean, like I have money, I still have money, I can still pay the bills. You know, but right now the only thing I have. Okay, the only thing I have is Twitch, okay? <laughs> but the thing is, I don't advertise myself. I don't advertise myself where I want... I don't advertise myself where... um. Twitch is kind of like a work, okay? That's where you... Some people, that's where people live off the money that they make on Twitch, okay? But I don't want to advertise myself through that, you know? Because I'm trying to use this platform as to help others, you know? Like, for free, you know? I'm your psychiatrist, for free, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, the dilemma is I... I, I, <laughs> I can't, like... I lost all the opportunities that was in front of me, you know? I, I could have... I don't know, but... And then on top of that, I don't have a high school diploma, okay? Yeah, I know I could get, I know I could get a GED, I could do it, but I can't. I can't, I don't have that fucking... I don't have that. I'm not... I don't have that willpower to do it. I can't, I can't. So... This is why, um, this is where I fight every day. Like, like, I'm not useless. I am useful, but I'm pretty useless because I'm not really, you know, trying to fight that shit and to make it better, you know? I, I'm not even doing my, I'm not doing my best to go out and find a job anymore, you know? It's just me just staying at home or just, you know, helping out, you know, my parents, whatever, with whatever they need, you know? And I, I don't like living off my parents' fucking income, you know? I hate that shit. They've been through so much shit, you know? And I'm just here still fucking at home. Living the life, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it's fucking, you know? I say you know a lot, but... um, 
I'm sure. I just need to fight. I just need to fight this all. You know, I'm still fighting. Like I say, I'm still fighting. You know, every day. One, mm -hmm. one day, one day I will win. Some of the battles I win, some of the battles I lose. But those battles I lose, I continue to fight. You know, and I continue to do what I'm what I'm good at. You know, for now, mm -hmm. <laughs> until maybe something just shows up in from in my door. That's what I believe. Uh, something's gonna come to my door. I know it's kind of sound like a like a like uh, trying to get a freebie and stuff like that. But no, I'm, I'm just I just can't like I'm still I'm still kinda I'm still like kind of like I I may I may be like all over the place, but like in certain certain area I'm kind of closed. I can't go out of that. I'm still in this bubble, you know. And it's really hard to just. Get out of this bubble. I'm trying to fight every day. I've been fighting every day to get out of this bubble, but that's what I've been doing. So, but COVID did fuck me up a lot. <laughs> like, but it happened for a reason. That's what I believe. It happened for a reason. It had to happen. Maybe it was just protecting me from, you know, whatever that, you know, maybe I, cause I get, I get hurt a lot. I am very clumsy. I get hurt a lot. So could be that, but, um, and it worst come to worst if I, ha if I have nowhere to go. I got places to go. I, I can go there, but I'm just saving that last moment, you know? I'm just waiting. Yeah. Until I get to that moment. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, for the next question, <clears throat> tell us about Sunny. Sunny. The importance of Sunny and just everything you can about your past dog. Oh, Sunny, oh. Sonny was my first dog. He uh, passed away last year, around. Yeah, I, I got the uh, January thirteenth, twenty twenty. Oh shit! Oh, is that from the IG? Huh? Because I don't. Where did you get this date from? Did I give you the date? Uh, on Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, so he had um. So at this time, I was kind of helping out. I was kind of working in a way, but I was not working in a way. And I was outside. I was I was not giving. I was my I wasn't there at home a lot. And he was he was you know I, he looks at you know he loves me of course he's my dog you know. Um. He's my sorry. Wait, let me drink some water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can talk about like how you uh, got your dog, like how it started. It took me six months to find Sunny. I was looking for a Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Well, I was looking. I wasn't really looking for a Pembroke Welsh Corgi in the beginning. I was just looking at any dogs to get, and then I don't know where it came from, but I started wanting a Pembroke Welsh Corgi. They're so fucking lovely. They're attent they're attentive, very attentive, very energetic. You know, very lovely, very smart. And um, I you know I kept looking, looking, and like six months later, I found someone. Uh, this was oh where I think it was near Santa Clara, and then I picked him up. You know. And I, I went and I brought him home. So at this time, my mom was, uh, she was afraid of all animals. She didn't like dogs. She hated dogs. Yeah. And I brought this dog into the home. Of, you know, it, of course, now, now, you know, now she loves dogs. She loves all kinds of dogs. Before, she it was she would hate it. It was disgusting. She was scared, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Sunny changed, the, changed our family lives a lot, too. And I also, um, I also learned wrong, wrongly how to take care of a dog, your first dog, because I, I went to the wrong people. I went to Korean people. Do not go to Korean people. <laughs> not all Korean people are the same, but you know, the people that I was going to was kind of like, um, I gave, I gave Sunny, um, there were, when she, when Sunny, when Sunny passed away, um, it took a big toll on my fucking mental state because um I've done so many bad shit. Like not bad shit. I wasn't really there for Sonny, you know? Um I wasn't really there for him. And it's just the fact just like I don't know, every time I see like dogs, dogs videos giving love and stuff, I I, I just I, I regret bringing Sonny to my life. Like I, I regret him coming into my life because I feel like I put him through a lot of fucking shit, you know? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, so I never really grieved for Zunny. 
when Sonny passed away, I um, I was work, I was kind of working, so I was trying to get over it. I didn't want to, I didn't want, you know, I didn't want, because I was, I was trying to get, you know, I was trying to work and shit, you know, I'm trying to make money. Um, whew. sorry, every time Sonny comes out, I, I get, get kind of like this. No, it's okay. Let's take your time. <clears throat> okay. I, I personally believe that I didn't deserve Sonny because of the shit, the way I treated Sonny. Um... I didn't grieve over him yet. I still haven't cried it out. That's why from time to time when people mention Sonny, I uh I kinda cry from time to time, you know? Uh, I try not to cry though. I, I know I know crying is good, but I try not to cry, okay? Mm -hmm. Um I learned that um I learned that um <laughs> Dude, I fucking I fucking <laughs> Fucking, I'm, I'm going, I'm going crazy right now. Fucking right now, I'm going crazy. Woo, hold up, hold up, hold up. Um, okay. Um, okay. Hold up, hold up. Chillin', 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 chill, chill. Okay. <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying not to cry. Hold up. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so um, Sonny died of of cancer. He had tumor. Um. He had tumor in his like kidney area, and um, I came home because my mom told me he was, he was like his face was full and everything. Came home and and I took a picture of him. I don't know if you've seen the Instagram, but uh, there's an Instagram where there's a picture of him like all swollen. So that that tumor spread in one day, that spread him to his lungs and it spread to his face. And um um, I took him, you know, I took him to the vet, and they told me he can. You know, it's there is like a like an itty itty bitty percent of him surviving. If I take him to a specific uh, uh doctor that could you know you know like you know fix this right. Um, but at the same time, every second that he's living, he's in excruciating pain. Um, I think the most hardest decision of my life was um uh, having him getting euthanized. Um. I wish I wasn't there to see him go because I think this is a very traumatizing incident for me because when he did get euthanized, first of all, before he got euthanized, when he came out, he was very happy. He wanted to go on the walk. But my mind, my mom's mind, my mom, my mind was like, let's let him go so that he's he's free from pain. And um, what, what I regret the most about him being euthanized is that I couldn't give him his last walk. Like I know he was in pain, but when he came out, I know he wanted to walk. I know he wanted to go, but I took that away from him because he was in so much pain. And um, I took so much shit away from him. I took so much time away from him. I couldn't get. I didn't give my all. Is what I'm saying, you know. And when they, when they euthanized him, I just saw his eye. I just saw his eye disappear and just fucking, fucking destroy me like so much, cause I couldn't give him the best. I couldn't. I couldn't give him my all, you know? I'm just hurt that, you know? I'm just hurt that he, uh, he couldn't live the best. I'm just hurt that I couldn't give him my all. If, if I could go back, I would not want, <laughs> honestly, I would not want to. I would, I would not have fucking bought it. I would have just left it alone. And this is my traumatizing it is incident. I cannot have another I do want another dog, but I cannot. I cannot get past this. Cause I feel like it's gonna happen again. And this is also the reason why I don't want a kid too, because what if I do it to a, a actual fucking human baby? You know? So
I don't know if you ever lost a dog, but yo, man, just just seeing that eyeball just disappears. Woo, man. It's it's fucking crazy, man, yo. But I'm I'm glad he's he's in a peaceful world. I don't know if this dog heaven. But I like to believe he's in dog heaven. <laughs> and like I said, my mom wasn't depressed too. Sunny uh, really cured my mom's depression. And this is why I want to bring back. I mean, not bring back, but just, you know, grab another dog. But like I said, I just can't get past this. Yeah. It's good to have a dog, but if you don't have the fucking time, you don't have the fucking... If you don't have the time, don't don't even try, dude. That's that's how I would say, it, dude. Don't don't fucking regret that. I mean, please, I mean, if you're if you're having a mental or whatever, it's good to have a friend. They will be your only friend, dude. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, oh damn, fucking fucking cried. <laughs> you're okay. <clears throat> do you do you need a minute? No, I'm good. Still good? Okay. Alright, change of pace. Now that we've talked about the deep stuff. So, going forward, what are your current goals and aspirations? I think uh, I want to get back to music. I want to get back to my goal. of reaching uh, people's hearts, people's souls. I do want to change the world. It's hard. The world to change the, to change the world is fucking difficult. But if I put my soul and my mind to it, I think I could make it happen. I made a lot of shit happen. I, I'm sure I could do that. But I'm just waiting for my computer to be rebuilt. I just can't rebuild it because, you know, it's, I'm not good with technology. So I'm just waiting for waiting for people to be free and help me rebuild this computer because I have all the fucking. I have all the uh, uh, upgrade equipment, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm just waiting on that day comes. And I've been kind of listening to the instrumentals that I've been working on. And I do have a few songs that I want to record. I don't know if you heard, but, um, but on my, my other stream, I was reading out my song. But mm -hmm. those are the few songs that I have. And then all the songs that I did a long time ago, I want to re-record it and make it into a better finalized ver version. Uh, that's what I want to do. And maybe, uh, you know, reach out. Like I said, just want to make sure no one goes through the shit I went through. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's one of my goals. Good, okay. Yeah. Continue to be there for people. Yeah, and what type of traveling have you done? And versus where you want to go in the future? Honestly, I, I, I've, I don't usually travel. I don't like traveling alone, first of all. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't like it. Um, where do I want to go? Um, it's not about where do I want to go? Where am I going to go? You know? Mm -hmm. So I just kind of like, I just let life be life. What life brings me, I, I, um, whatever, whatever life brings me, I, I take it and just go with life. I'm like going with the flow, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And speaking of your music, do you have a song that you've created that is like the most important to you? Um, it's to uh, to both both the songs. It's um, <clears throat> so last year, last year, no, last year, two years ago, I'm not sure which year, but the year that I made this song, that I wrote this song, was the year where everyone that I fucking knew was going to depression and I I wrote two songs according to that to kind of uplift their souls I never got to record it mm -hmm. and I never got to really you know yeah I never got to record it and I want I want to I want to finish those two songs definitely those two songs is what I really want to work on yeah <laughs> got it so it's still being worked on, basically, right? It's it's already done. I just need to record it. Got it. So that's music. And talking about social media now, 
Aside from Twitch, what platforms are you currently using? Instagram. Instagram. That's it. Instagram Mainly. and Twitch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Instagram. Nice. Could also be found on the bottom right of the screen. <laughs> and talking about Twitch. All right. Big, big topic. Let's start off with your name. We know the sunny part, but how did you get Papa Bear? Um, so I used to play CS, 1.5, 1.6, whatever, and I don't know where it came from, but Papa Bear Chino was my name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Chino was my rapper name, or is my rapper name. Also, the name that everyone calls me by, like my, my friends, parents call me by Chino, my teachers call me Chino, you know, it was just a name that just stuck with me. And I didn't know, I honestly don't know where Papa Bear Chino came from. It just, out of one of, out of, one of, one of the days, just Papa Bear Chino. And then <laughs> I became Papa Bear Chino. <laughs> okay. And then uh, Twitch came, and I didn't want people to know my Papa Bear Chino. So I just took it Papa Bear Sunny. Papa Bear Sunny, Sunny came from my PlayStation name. And that's what I went by. So uh, that's, and at the, t- at the time, I had Sunny. So that's why I named it Papa Bear Sunny. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, there's really no much, I don't know where, Papa Bear Sunny came from, or Papa Bear Chino came from. Mm-hmm. It just came out of nowhere. <laughs> okay, so how it doesn't did... have a. Oh, go ahead. No, I just it doesn't have a story behind the Papa Bear. Yeah. So talking about Twitch, how did you hear about it, and how did you actually get started with streaming? I, I heard about Twitch through uh. So I followed this guy named Nathan Ng on Instagram. <clears throat> He's um. He's like a TikToker. He's mm-hmm. like an Instagrammer, whatever. Um, I met him through that. I followed him. And then one day he said he was uh, streaming on Twitch. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? And I went there and I followed him. And then, so he was like the opening doors to Twitch. Like he streams too, you know, he's, he's, he's big, you know, he's like, to me, he's a celebrity. Like anyone, anyone that's up there is a celebrity to me, you know? Yeah. You know? And he's a, he was the, um, he was like the opening door. For Twitch, and then I started to see what Twitch was about, and then I started like going to different communities, and then I came across uh, one community. Uh, her name is SG Vigilante. She's also a streamer. Mm-hmm. To me, she's like a mom of Twitch, and she actually she and her community actually helps me out and have helped me out in the beginning and still helps me out. You know? Yeah. And um, she uh invited me. She kind of like she kind of said, "Hey man, can you jo- you want to join my team?" I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? And I joined their stream team, and from there, I'm just, I'm there, <laughs> you know. But it's crazy because back then I was just like, damn, I'm, I'm just, I'm very scuffed. I'm, I'm really nothing, you know. But like people like her, like you know, people like her and other people that I meet, they, they always tell me otherwise, like you know. And that, and I just start to see, and I'm like, damn, I do mean, I do mean something in this world, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's and then and then one day I just you know what because I think they were trying to tell me I should Twitch. My friends been telling me to stream long time ago, but not just Twitch, just in general. And um, I don't know where I just started my first uh, Twitch, first Twitch stream. It was very scuffed. I used my I used my phone as a camera, and then you know I used OBS, the Twitch Studio OBS, the part, the fucking beta version. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I used that, and then yeah, after I streamed, and I just started streaming. And just I just grew. When was this? Uh, this was last year, February, like around end of February. Mm-hmm. Yeah, la- last year end of February. Oh okay. Oh, it's almost. Oh, was it March? Well, February, February, March. Mm-hmm. It's almost one year for sure, though. <clears throat> I see. Mm-hmm. And what categories do you usually stream, and what's your current schedule? Uh, categories. I usually I do a lot of karaoke. <clears throat> I do a lot of karaoke. So I love karaoke. You know, COVID happened and you know we couldn't really karaoke wasn't even open. I used to go karaoke seven days a week, kind of thing, you know? Wow. Sober or drunk, you know. I just love singing, you know. Mm-hmm. And people just hit, hit me up, let's go karaoke. I'm like, okay, I'm down, you know. Um I do so that would be music or just chatting. And um and then I fell I felt addicted to I so I started Valorant maybe like nine months ago. Um, I got addicted to it. 
Uh, so Valorant was a uh, Valorant just chatting music, you know. Those are I think I, I guess those are my there's those been my main, but you know there's other stuff. I have a lot of games that I haven't worked on, like horror games. Mm-hmm. I can't play it right now because I'm scared. <laughs> like I'm scared. I'm a little bitch when it comes to scary games. I'll scream. I don't give a fuck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh um, I say Valorant and just chatting and music would be like the main, main like thing that I usually be at. Okay. And um, the second what was the second question? You asked me another one. Schedule. Schedule. I don't have a schedule because I'm always on call for work, possible mm-hmm. work, or you know, helping my parents, helping my cousins, whatever. So I call, everything is work for me. Everything that I go out is work for me. So I call it work, you know. <laughs> so I'm always on call for something, right? But if I if I'm home and I'm free, I will stream. Mm-hmm. And lately, I've been free, and I've been str- I've been stream. So when I first started. My hours of stream, the reason why I can stream so long is because uh, when I first started, I used to stream at least 12 hours, at most 18 hours. That was just like my regular thing. That was like seven days a week. And I streamed seven days a week for three months until it kind of caught up to my mental. Because, yo, it, it's kind of hard to do that shit every day kind of thing, you know? So uh, it, it kind of fucks with your uh, mental uh, mental health. And I stopped for a bit and then... And now I'm kind of kind of back because I'm kind of free. I'm kind of stronger than before. That's why I can, you know, stream longer. And that's why I don't have a schedule. Because mm-hmm. I don't know if, it'd be like, if someone's going to call me, hey, can you help me do this and that? I don't know, you know? So I don't have a set schedule, but I stream as much as I can whenever I'm free. So basically every day. <laughs> nice. And as much, much as I can. <clears throat> okay. And who would you consider as your day ones? on Twitch, who are still with you today? Day ones, I would say, uh, his name is Arclone. Arclone streamer, SG Vigilante. Um, oh, Dig. Dig is the guy I was shouting out at the tournament. <laughs> the interview, um, um, let's see. There's, oh, Joshua Xavier, but he doesn't stream as much. Uh, he's busy, you know, a lot of people are busy. Um, there's more people, but I would say there are my day ones. Yeah. <clears throat> have, yeah. you, have you uh, done any Twitch meetups of your own yet? Uh, no, not yet. I So there's a thing about me. I'm very, um, as much as I love everyone, I, and I tell, I love myself too, but I'm very low confident on people l- loving me. Like, I, I, I get the love, you know, I see the support, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong, but uh, I just can't wrap myself, wrap around myself, and think that there's actually people, I mean, there's, look, look, a lot of people has been showing me love, love and support, okay, but I just, I don't, I don't, I, so the reason why I can't do shit like fucking, like marbles and stuff, like, I can't, I can't, because I, I don't, I'm not confident in myself. To have people come and join, you know, with me and game, you know, like for for people to join me in Valorant, it's like, whoa, what the fuck? That's why every time when when, when they're like, oh yeah, you want to play? I'm like, oh shit, for real? I'm down. I'm always down because you know, mm-hmm. I I'm not used to that. I'm not used to that love, you know. I I'm just not used to that love. <laughs> I get love, but I'm not used to that love. Like, Got I don't. It. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so. Do you have a favorite memory on Twitch? Favorite memory? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so I started as an iron in Valorant, and I told you I was addicted. Okay. My my goal, one of my, I had one goal in Valorant, and it was to reach silver. I sweat, blood, sweat, and tears. Played eight hours to twelve hours every fucking day on Valorant, <laughs> and um. <coughs> And most of the time, I solo queue. Sometimes, you know, I you know queue with other people, but most of the time, it was a solo queue. And it took me a while, but I got to silver. And I remember, I remember being so excited. I remember someone clipped it, so it's somewhere in my clips. I remember uh, being so excited that I got there. I, me, I got there. Have you seen me play? I play like ass, <laughs> but I fucking got there. You know, so I know for sure that. That's why I tell everyone, you know, practice makes. Well, not practice doesn't make perfect. I used to say that a lot, but practice makes improvement. You'll get there if you continue to 
thrive, continue to go for it, you know? And I think that was the most exciting thing. And mm-hmm. reaching, reaching, I think, reaching 800 followers, what am I reaching, reaching fucking, what am I exciting thing to, I was like, what the fuck? I have, I have more than 50 followers, you know? <laughs> like, what? What's going on? Like, what? People watch me, and then I, when I, I try not to watch, the, look at the viewers and stuff, but when I see, like, when I see people there, I'm like, oh shit, there's people watching me? Hey, yo, you know? Like, I don't uh-huh. mind if there's one, I don't care if there's, I mean, I'm, of course I care, but I don't care if there's only one, I don't care, you know, whatever. It's just that one person, it, it helps me a lot, and then it, it just, I try not to see viewers. I don't, I don't, I try not to see it because it fucking, you know, it gets to me. It gets to everyone, you know? But, um, um, I get really excited. It's like, oh shit, people. But then I get flustered because it's like, oh shit, there's so many people. So when I get raided, when I get raided is when I get the flustered, most flustered because I'm like, oh shit, there's there's more people than than, than they're regular. I'm like, oh fuck, dude. What am I? Just be yourself, be yourself. I can't. But I'm like flustered. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I think I see silver. Silver is when I when I when I was most excited. Silver, when I reached silver one. Now I don't care what my rank is. Okay. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I'm bronze one. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Start somewhere. Okay. Start somewhere. So, what are the pros and cons of Twitch, in your opinion? Pros and cons. Pros, you get to meet a lot of people if you step out of your bubble. Step out of your bubble and kind of like. You can you can you can meet people, you know. You don't have to meet them in person. And you you can just watch them and just kind of vibe them out. Like, oh, I fuck with this person, and then you start talking. That's you know that's like a very good uh like there's a lot of people they're kind of closed. You know they you know they want you know make sure kind of closed off. So they want to see they want to vibe people out. But in real life in person you can't really vibe them out. You have to see them. You have to talk with them. It's like you know whatever. But on on Twitch like you could just just watch them and you could just vibe them out and you know. If you fuck with them, you fuck with them. If you don't, you don't. That's I think that's a pro about it. Con about it is um Con is um about it is sometimes there are not I believe this for sure. Not everyone will make it. But that's life, right? In Twitch, not everyone will have this many, you know, like this many followers, this many viewers. Not everyone will have this many chatters, you know, this and that. You know, I'm used, I'm used, I'm usually used to when, when my chat's dead. I'm usually used to, so I don't really try to look at. I, uh, I have a habit of trying to look at that chat, so I miss chat a lot. This has been a lot of time I miss chat a lot. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> and then I see, I didn't know until I see the VOD. I don't, I try not to watch the VOD, but because it cringes me out. But I watched VOD, I'm like, god damn, you took 15 minutes to. Say hello back to the person that said hello a long time ago. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's just things like that. But I, it's just and also like um like so, I do have a lot of mods, but um you know my bot my mods most of my mods is like I kind of like just I just mod them you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and most of my mods are streamers too. So you know and a lot of people have their you know life to live and stuff. So I understand like don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I'm chill, I'm chill. But so I start to mod. I start to learn how to mod myself. So. When my mod is working in my channel, and then I like, I'm gonna get shout out to whatever. I, I do it on my own because you know it's a habit of you know. Like I said, uh, a lot of my mods are busy, you know, because they have their own lives to live, and I have weird ass fucking hours. <laughs> I have weird ass hours, so it's a totally understandable. So it's like I'm trying to get used to it, but it's so hard. But I don't know what's the. Why did I bring this up? I don't fucking know. Mm-hmm. I don't fucking. I just got too excited of talking and just. <laughs> But oh man, I'm gonna uh, definitely grow a tonko hair just by Udaga Usuma Tonko mo Italian. Anyway, so yeah, okay, cool. Okay, yeah, we were talking about pros and cons. Okay. <laughs> pros and cons, 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 cons. Yeah, not anyone's gonna, ev- not everyone's gonna make it. Not everyone's gonna have the same support. But you know, we human kind of compare ourselves with other people that are bigger than all of us. You know. Mm-hmm. Con is a lot of people come to Twitch thinking it's easy. You know. Like it's easy, but it's not really easy. You have to, you have to fucking grind. You have to grind, and you have to not give up. You can't let, you can't let uh, days of people not being in your channel. I'm sh- and 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 also I've seen Twitch Agatorium, The way it works, it's weird because 
sometimes you have you actually have like fucking 10 viewers let's say right but you if you look at viewers it will say one or zero that's why a lot of people give up twitch that's where that's where a lot of people give up with twitch but i think that's the con about that you know it kind of like kind of breaks them it could be a place where you could win but also could be a place where you could lose and when you lose it's gonna be really heart heartbreak heartbreak you know and i think that's the con about twitch yeah okay and have you personally ever dealt with trolls and hate on twitch and if so how did you handle the situations when i first started uh twitch um i i i had trolls come come by um but like kind of racist <laughs> racist kind of trolls mm -hmm. and also like you know like i don't know it's just weird trolls <laughs> but in the beginning like yo not in the beginning but still now i try to try to think it this way they're they're trolls they're toxic for a reason but that doesn't mean that um that doesn't mean that they don't deserve the love you know so usually when i do when usually depending on my mood though usually usually i'm good right but usually when trolls and dogs become usually i try to give love but don't get me wrong if i feel offended if i if i'm having a bad day i'm gonna let you know hey man uh you don't have to you don't have to stop you know you're fucking bullying me you know and you know and i'll let them out you know i'll let them you know i'll give them the time to either to apologize or whatever and if they don't then you know that's it you get the boot you're gonna get banned i'm sorry i can't i can't deal with that right now you know and like there's there's certain people there's certain people who um like came out kind of kind of foul to me because you know they didn't like they didn't like i guess they didn't like the way i am my personality i guess those people, I just straight up block. I just ban them because I don't want to deal with that. I really don't want to deal with that. You know, mm -hmm. it's gonna it's gonna fuck up my positive fucking serotonin le levels, and it, and I don't want that to fuck up other people's. You know, so I just for me, I just take out talk any talks nowadays. I just take out toxic people out of my life because I have a lot of toxic friends. Why do I want more? I don't want more toxic people in my life. <laughs> I have too many toxic friends. <laughs> you know. But nowadays, I usually just handle like just just I just block them, so mm -hmm. I don't see them. Okay. So there are people who come to my channel, I can't see them because I block them. Yeah. And they talk, they talk. But I don't know if they're there. You know. So if you ever, if, I don't know if you guys are here, but if, if whoever's here, if you ever like, if I if you ever say hi and then I I didn't respond to you, you probably was talking to me and I blocked you or you know or something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's not the case. It doesn't happen, you know. But I try to keep, try to keep it uh, safe, safe, as much as I can. Yeah. So, what are your goals for Twitch? I'm gonna just keep doing me. People come. There's a lot of people who uh, who came and showed me that um, I made their day better. Mm -hmm. And that kind of like makes me happy, you know. Like I, I did something. I made a change in someone's life. And I'm gonna continue, just you know, just hopefully help someone's day get better, you know. <laughs> like I'm just, nice. continue, just continue, just be whoever I'm. Just continue to you know, you know, fucking just go left and right, find people, you know, meet new people. And I'm gonna try to connect other people. And I want, excuse me, I want whoever. Whoever is with me, I want them to grow too. And in order for them to grow, in, in order for them to grow um, a little bit quicker than you know growing there by myself, that me being there and then kind of introducing each other, you know, I kind of connecting like how you are doing, you know, you're the bridge, right? <laughs> you you are the bridge, right? So I I that's why I think I kind of fuck with you too, cause uh, I'm like that too. I'm like the bridge. I don't like to fucking say this to my with my own mouth, but I <laughs> I like uh I like being the bridge. I like being the bridge and connecting a lot of people with good people, you know. Like mm -hmm. I just like that shit. It's my shit. Hey. And what advice would you give to streamers who are trying to get started or are just trying to grow on this platform? Um, honestly, just do you. Just do you and be you. Be the real you. You know? 
because you will want people to like you for you. And let's say you were, you were someone else. Like, you were someone else. You had, like, a two-face, whatever. And then later on, that shit came out. Your, your other true self came out. And then you started, losing, you started losing followers and viewers. Don't hurt yourself. Just be true to yourself. And like I said, not everyone's going to make it. Twitch is a very tough world. The world itself is already tough. But Twitch is a very tough world. You either make it or you don't. And some people are just there, just just there, just for hobbies and whatever, you know. Don't uh don't go to Twitch thinking you're gonna make a lot of money. I know a lot of people, a lot of people I know, they started Twitch because they thought they could make a lot of money. It's not like that. Twitch takes a lot of uh a lot of percentage of that shit too. So <laughs> don't think that you're you're getting all the money, yo. <laughs> so don't go don't go into Twitch streaming with the wrong set of mind. Go with the right set of mind. Do it for yourself. Do it for your whoever, whatever goal you got. But don't do it for money. Because that's going to fucking... It's going to break your heart, man. I'm telling you. It's going to break your heart. Just be you. Be your true self. And you want to build... You want to build a community on your true self. You want people to like you for yourself. Not for the fake fake of yourself, you know? Not the not the uh, fake shit of yourself. You, wanna, you, want, you want friends that support you for who you are. Yeah, not everyone's gonna support you, but you. I rather pick, I rather pick three real friends than have a million fake friends. You know. Mm -hmm. Trust me, it, it it seems it seems like nah. I'm not the million friends because there's there's always gonna be there. Nah, they're not always gonna be there. Those three, those three viewers, those three viewers, this one viewer will always be there with you as you grow. So don't don't like fucking. Don't get too greedy. That's what I'm saying. Just be be true to yourself. Be true to everyone else. You know. You want to be toxic? It's cool to be toxic. <clears throat> just you know, don't don't you know, just just be yourself. That's what I'm saying. You know, just be yourself. <laughs> yeah. Great advice. Like I said, no one, not everyone's gonna make it. So people will make. Some people will make it. Some people won't. But it doesn't mean it doesn't mean just because you didn't make it at Twitch. You're not gonna make it in life. No, there's everyone's built different. Everyone's built different. Everyone has their own life path. And maybe you just haven't found that yet. A lot of mm -hmm. people learn uh, Twitch is for them. A lot of people learn Twitch is not for them. You know, just uh, just be happy. You know, just be happy. Be for yourself. Take care of yourself first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Last two questions about okay. Twitch. So overall, give us a summary of how Twitch has impacted your life. My life, um, it helped me through my depression a lot. Like I was alone. I mean, I wasn't alone. I have friends, you know. But I met other people who's going through the. Sh I'm sure they're going through the same shit. They don't have to say it to me. Like I said, I vibe you out, and I know it, right? You know, just look in your eyes. Look, I'm looking. At, I'm looking at your eyes, Wilson. I see it, you know. <laughs> so it's like, uh, you know. I, like I meet other people, it makes me think, damn, I'm not the only one who's uh, going through this tough time. There's other people that's going through tough times, you know? And uh, it just makes me see things like, okay, it's just a different timing. I'm just not shining right now, but I know I will shine later. And I'm continuing to grow. Just me growing is a proof, is a proof that Twitch helped me. Like, you know, it's me, me growing. I'm also growing myself. I'm trying to be more humble too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, I I feel like the answer that answer didn't really a really answer your question. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but it really helped me. It, it did help me a lot. Like it helped me a lot. Like it helped me a lot. Like it helped me see a lot of things. It helped me be there for a lot of people too. You know, it's just I don't know. I like it. Chill. It's chill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Okay. All right, last question. Uh, just your thoughts. What are your thoughts about having a Twitch crush, and do you have one? A what? <laughs> a Twitch crush. What's a Twitch crush? All right, that's a no. We can skip this question. Oh, like me, me liking this girl and stuff, or or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like a streamer. You know, I've I've never came across a Twitch crush, but if you, <laughs> <laughs> if in the future you are my Twitch crush. Watch out, I'm coming for you. Not in a creepy way, I'm coming for you. I got you. 
We're going to grow together. Baby girl, baby girl, we're going to grow together. Me and you, we're going we're gonna to make a whole nation with each other. I got oh. you, baby. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. A whole nation together. <laughs> yeah, I haven't met a crush y'all yet. Yet. It's kind of weird because, like, Twitch is, like, my, like, workplace in a way. And then, I mean, I'm sure because, you, you know, this coworkers that you fall in love with or, not, or you know, just you know, whatever. But, no, but it's just, I don't know. It's just because the way I look at things, the way I look at people is more like, a friend, you know? Yeah. Like, but don't get me wrong, I am a shrimp. I am a shrimp. I'm sure when a fucking, you know, someone comes, bam, I'll be like, hey, I'm there for you. <laughs> and I'm just. <laughs> it's good. <yeah>. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but no, not yet, not yet. I haven't met anyone like that. <laughs> oh, man, that's too funny. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about Valorant now. Switching Yo. subjects. You're too funny, man. <laughs> Way to lighten up the mood. <laughs> I'm definitely get. Uh, this is Korean saying, which means after you cry, you laugh, you're gonna grow butthole hair. So I'm just keep thinking in that about that shit because you know I fucking anyways going on. Let's go. Okay, Valorant. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's get it. <laughs> let's get it. All right. Favorite agent in the game and least favorite. <laughs> favorite? Reyna. That's my that's my like oh, I wanna Reyna or Jet actually. Those are those are what well, depends on the map though actually. So Reyna or Jet, what are those? Reyna or Jet. Reyna because if I'm playing and my teams are ass, I can heal myself. I don't have to rely on my team. I could just fucking, you know, kill and then just fucking heal myself. I'm you know, just fucking solo this. Fuck it. I'm solo kill. I'm a solo this too, eh? Because my team don't want to be my team. It's all G, you know? But, um, and least favorite is fucking Astra because I don't know how to fucking use Astra. And I have bad uh, fucking experience with Astra. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't know if you remember the, the turning, the Astra wall, and I fucking died. You know? That, yeah. <laughs> me and Astra. <laughs> <laughs> Not me and Astra. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um... Favorite gun in the game, and which gun do you think is the worst? Oh, the worst? I used to think Marshall and Shorty is the worst, but I think the worst is the Guardian, because I cannot use that gun. I know that's like the most OP fucking gun, 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 gun but <laughs> I don't know how to use it. I fucking don't know how to use it. Like, uh, the most OP gun, I guess, will either be a Sheriff or a Vandal. Okay. I love the sheriff. I've been practicing sheriff <clears throat> with all my life because sheriff is the most cheapest. But sheriff, you can one shot people. As long as you you know you know aim at the head, you know, mm -hmm. one shot people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Favorite skin bundle. Skin. So it depends. It depends. So what guns are we talking about, Rick, right? For sheriffs, I need reaver. Or Ion, Reaver or Ion. Mm -hmm. uh, for Vandals or Phantom, I need Glitch Pop. You're right. I don't know if you're watching this. I've been waiting nine months for fucking Glitch Pop to come into my fucking store. You still haven't given it to me. You don't want my money? What's wrong with you? I know you want my money. Please, Glitch Pop. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ion, Ion and Reaver is the skin to go. All right, cool. And now rank your maps from favorite to least. Huh? Rank your maps from favorite to least. Oh, maps. Least fracture. Fuck that map. I fucking hate it with a passion. Please get that shit out the way. Please get that toilet, you know, woo -woo -woo, and out of here, you know? I don't want that. I don't <laughs> want it. <laughs> uh, favorite map. Hmm. Wait, do I do, I do like one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we know Fracture is fucking all the way in the bottom, in the sewage, in the fucking dumpster, in the trap, all the way down there, right? That's what we know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I say, uh, and then from, so right there will be 
I say, I say fucking, I say Haven because there's so many fucking sites. Can we just keep it one side or two side? Why is there three side? That's too much running, you know? That's too much, you know, finger WSD and then, you know, running with your That's too much. Come on, yo. Come on, right? Yo, we, I don't want to be lazy. <laughs> this man said one site or two site. What What one site? <laughs> it's two or three. <laughs> All right. Haven, got it. Go ahead. Okay. Haven, and then uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, I would say, um, I would say, I would say, that, so the one above that would be, um, man, this is going to be hard. A bind? I say bind. Bind. Okay. The the TP is fucking crazy, but at the same time it's fun. Don't get me wrong, I really I like bind, but it's just we're just putting order, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, ice box because I played I, every time I fucking solo queued, it was either ice box or fucking fracture. So I fucking like, but I like playing ice box sometimes. And when I play jet, I love ice box, you know. Okay. <clears throat> so I put ice box. Um, let's see. Uh, what we have what we have breeze. Ascent As and no, split. I call it. Okay, ascent, not ascent, ascent. So okay, breeze, 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 and what? Split and, and ascent. Oh, split. Oh, split. What split? Is that the uh, fucking uh, the sewer? Yeah. Oh, sp okay. Split is below, underneath bind. Bind's on top. Split. Okay. Okay. On, okay. And then um and then now we're doing ascent uh -huh. and breeze. So it really depends, cause if I'm playing jet, breeze is number one. If I'm playing Reina, I'm playing ascent. Ascent. Mm -hmm. Ascent. Ascent. Yes. So so those two are one of those. It's a fighter. Okay. I say breeze number one. I like breeze. I don't know the call nice. last for it, but I like breeze. Right. Wait, Breeze has two sides. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all I'm doing except for Haven. True that, true that. <laughs> cool, cool. That was the Valorant talk. And now coming down to the last few random questions. At this point, anyone in chat can ask questions and I'll ask him for you. So, <laughs> uh, what is your biggest pet peeve? Biggest pet peeve? Oh man, I remember I said I remember I said my pet peeve to someone because I couldn't think about it and I said this is my pet peeve. Pet peeve, um <clears throat> Man, I have this in my head, but I forgot it was. Pet peeve is one of those things where you gotta think about it, you know? I don't really like <clears throat> Pet peeve is when uh are we talking about Valorant or is this general? In general. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. No more Valorant. I'm, since since I can't think of it, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a pet peeve in Valorant. Okay. <laughs> pet peeve in Valorant is when my team fucking forfeits at fucking the let's say that let's say we're at zero, we're at, we're at zero, and the other uh, enemy team has nine points, you know, nine rounds, and the team forfeits. Nah, nah. The only FF you should know is fucking friends forever. I. Right? Uh, that's how we fucking play, all right? Don't fucking forfeit my shit. I didn't play nine fucking rounds to fucking quit. No, I'm not a fucking quitter. I'm gonna play all the way. I don't give a fuck if it's 13 and 0. I'm gonna play all the fucking way, all right? Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> but 13 0 means the game's over. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm saying, I, I'd rather just, you know, play it through, you know? I'd rather just play it through. Okay. Let, me, let me just play it through. But that's I, I can't I can't think of a pet peeve. I don't I don't know what's a, I don't no know what's a pet peeve. problem. All right, <laughs> like, all right. But I'll tell you later if whenever I figure out like oh yeah this is my pet peeve I'll let you know later you know. <laughs> Greatest fear. <laughs> Greatest fear. I fucking hate pain and I hate ghosts. That's it. Fucking hate pain and ghosts. Pain, pain, little fucking little fucking little fucking like bee went and then it fucking stopped me. Ah, fuck this shit. You know I can't do this. Oh my life is over. Kind of like that. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Favorite color. Favorite color. Um. So favorite color. It used to be red for sure. As you can mm -hmm. tell, red. Um. But I think I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say red and black. <laughs> so I guess red is still there. <laughs> okay, purple, okay. purple, purple, purple. I like purple, purple. too. Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> so, what do you think is your best trait or characteristic? Best trait of character character char <clears throat> what? <laughs> characteristic? Oh, I think just um I think my um I, this I'm just going to hate myself for saying this. But I <laughs> I think my best characteristic is it's um giving love. You know, egg yo, giving love and just just smiling all the fucking time. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm going through shit, I'm smiling. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing, I'm always laughing, you know. So, good, good. That's me. <clears throat> okay. What would you say is your biggest accomplishment in life and biggest failure or regret? Biggest failure and regret is me taking that break from that rap. Like I said, I had hella opportunities that could have gone, but I didn't because I was fucking lazy and doing drugs and shit. <laughs> um, greatest uh, accomplishment? Biggest accomplishment is greatest accomplishment is being here, living. Like I'm here still, mm -hmm. I'm still living. I think that's a pretty. I think that's a as a comp. See, a lot of people don't fucking see that as an accomplishment, cause it's really tough to see it. But whoever's watching this, I'm telling you. You're living now. That should be your greatest accomplishment. Of course, you have your other shit, but if you don't have any other shit, that's your greatest accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Live, living is my greatest accomplishment. All right. How tall are you? How tall am I? Mm -hmm. I like to t tell people I'm six foot, but honestly, my my real you're not gonna be real with you. So I'm between five eleven and six. Okay. So I'm, so I'm 5'11.5. So that's what I like to tell. I'm six. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. What was your first impression of me? You? Yes. First impression? Mm hmm. When did I. I, I gotta remember when did I. A oh, first impression. You're a very. You, let me hold up. I have this in my head. I just had it. Just fucking lost it. <laughs> don't worry. I won't make fun. I won't. I won't not. It's not make fun. I won't fucking lie. You know. I, I don't cap. Do you see me yeah. wearing a cap? No. Okay. It's cool. All right. Just <laughs> let me. Let me. Let me. Uh, first impression of you was um. Cause uh, you you organize a lot of things, and like, like you you I what I saw you is you helped a lot of people. You know. And I think in my first, my first defense, first defense, the fuck am I talking about? My first impression of you was like, this guy is gonna fucking make it. <laughs> this guy is fucking doing big things. This guy is the bridge. That's what the first impression was. Is it my second impression? Is my fucking third impression? My fourth impression. I saw your fucking uh, kindness. You have a very kind soul heart. Kind soul heart? What the fuck? You have a kind soul heart wait what fucking english i can't speak english i hope you know what i meant you have a very kind hearted soul there's go you have a kind hearted soul <laughs> yeah i think um that no, i'm thinking i know that was my that's my thing like the way i looked at you was like that's why i fuck with you i don't i don't fuck with people that just you know I, the reason i'm doing this because it's fucking itchy i'm not doing nothing you know i'm not doing nothing. i'm just i'm itchy okay <laughs> I know I'm sniffing like this, but it's just, I need a, it's itchy, so I gotta sniff it too, you know? And I'm sniffing and shit, so just wanna let you know, nothing wrong. I'm nothing wrong, nothing here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks for the first impression, man. <laughs> you know, Appreciate no, that. No. Uh, sure, do you have any tattoos, and would you, if you don't, would you be willing to get some? I have a tattoo on my right arm. I don't know if I would show this, because, what if it, is it like this? Where's my fucking... Oh, right there. There it goes. So it says, uh, brothers. Mm -hmm. Um, so it represents my life. My life is filled with a lot of brothers, brothers from the streets. It's not just my real brother, but my ex, like brothers that I, you know, it's like, like close friends. I call them brothers, you know, 
My brothers were always there, always keeping me on the right side, keeping me in the right path, which is why I got in my right arm. You know, it's, it's just, they're all, I'm always right with my brothers. That's why I got brothers. And if I wanted to get more, I would get a fucking fat ass tiger on my back with a Korean flag, but uh, I don't know. We'll see about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, name five streamers that you find yourself watching the most nowadays. Oh, man. <laughs> so watch it, not, not just like lurking, watching. Yeah. Um, oh man, this one's a bit tough because <laughs> I do watch a lot of people though. <laughs> I watch yeah. a lot of people, <clears throat> but I know this for sure. Um, Deeg is number one. O Deeg, O Deeg, O H D E A G. Uh, he's my so I met him through Twitch. Remember, like, so con pros about Twitch is you meet new people. So I met him through Twitch, he became a close friend, like. He became my close friend, and also he helped me through Valorant. He's, he's, a, he's a very cracked player. So, you know, I watch him a lot. And I learn from him a lot. That's number one. Number two. Number two has to be... Our clone. Our clone? Our clone is my... So, he's uh, he's been my day ones, right? Mm -hmm. And... um. He, he always helps me. He's always supporting me. He's always, you know, he's always there, you know, he's always there. Whenever I need help, I just go to him kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And then third would be, Wilson, you, I watch you a lot. Like, I fucking uh, watch you a lot, dude. I watch you a lot. Like, I, I don't have to tell you I watch you a lot. I redeem to sing it, you know, that's a lot of fucking <laughs> redemption. And I'm still going... <laughs> I got a third one coming, so I'm just watch out, yo. <laughs> I'm coming for you, bro. <laughs> uh -huh. um, um, fourth will be what's crazy is um, uh, fourth will be I say uh, Kev Pacify. Okay. I like watching him play. I'm just like I like his vibes. I mean, I, everyone that I watch, I like their vibes. I like you know talk with them, but I like um. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, don't like. I, I don't want anyone to feel offended or anything. I watch everyone, but you know, <laughs> I think I'm like mostly at at you know, there, mm -hmm. you know, just, just like, yeah. If you get mad, it's whatever. It is what it is. I don't care, and I do care, but, <laughs> but it's uh, it's what it is. Um, but okay. uh, pl pl Plastify is one of the uh, so Plastify and Deeg is the uh two Valorant streamers that I love watching. Like, not that I'm saying I don't love watching other Valorant players, but um, I actually can learn from them. Because they're fucking cracked. They're both immortals. Mm -hmm. They're both, you know, peaks, you know, almost close to, like, you know, like, like ready and everything. I think in my uh, honest opinion. So it's really, um, and, and they're both vibes. It's really chill. Deke, when he plays Valorant, he explains why he did this, what he would have done. So I learned from that shit. Classify, he has, you know, the, the vibes he give. And, and... His shots are so fucking clean. Jeez! But anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so that's four, right? That's four. We yeah, have a yeah, fifth, yeah. right? Fifth. Like, let me see. Hold up. I need to look. <clears throat> I'm listening to a song, so if I'm fucking humming, so sorry. <laughs> Give me one moment. All right, let me just look at this shit. It would be here for sure. Oh, okay. Um. The fifth one is kind of hard because it kind of like, you know, this. I'm not trying to pick whatever, who to pick whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm just really trying to like. Trying to like get the fucking like grasp of that shit, you know? Yeah. I would say I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna have to say just one moment. <laughs> Man, there's so many just like 
This is like the most hardest fucking questions I have been asked in my life. This is harder than the You don't have to pick a fifth, all right? You can just- So, hardest- I want to pick. The hardest PSAT. This is harder than PSAT, dude. I fucking didn't take PSAT because I fucking hate tests. But, you know, I think it's pretty, you know, yeah. I want to pick. I have to pick. It's just because I have to give me a question. I'm going to answer it. I don't give a fuck. All right. It's chill. Just give me about two more minutes. I'll be cool. <laughs> I will. I will. Fuck it. I will got this. I got this. I will say, um, I will say. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. There's too many people that I fucking watch. <laughs> I'm just no. these questions. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. No, I forgot. That was not his name. No, 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 okay, then no, it's not. Oh, 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 no, 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 it's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Riff, I have no idea, this is fucking hard. I can't do it, I can't give it to you. Yeah, we're skipping this oh, question. Fucking tough, god damn, man. I just like, I feel like I used all my, I look like used 95% of my fucking brain cells. <laughs> 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 There's so many, look, look, let me tell you, I'm gonna tell you something, okay, Wilson? Let me tell you something, let me, then my defense. When I watch streams, when I'm not streaming and I'm watching streams, mm -hmm. I have everyone's tab open yeah. and all their sounds is open. So I hear fucking 20 people talking, but I could like kind of like, you know, about, <laughs> I could like, they, everyone has distinctive voice so I uh -huh. can hear who's talking. That's why it's really hard to pick a fifth. But okay. the, the, the first four is who I really mainly, mainly are there, you know, just, you know, fucking chatting and shit like this, you know, whatever, this and that. But yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. Okay. Here we go. My final question. So, using your connection, who would you like to see as a future guest on this podcast and why? My connection? Yeah. So, like... Confusion? I don't have to know the person, but as long as you know the person, or it could oh. be a mutual, I don't know. Someone you know. Hmm. That's a tough one. But I'm gonna have, well, yo, I really want, I really want you to meet all my friends, yo. I really want you to mm -hmm. meet all my friends, of course. <clears throat> so there's, um, there's about three people. I can't really give you one name, but I'll give you three names. Okay. <laughs> the first one is, uh, uh, Arclone. Okay. Arclone. Uh, yeah. Arclone. The second one is SG Vigilante. Okay. And the third one is Odig. Ah. Yeah. I think that'd be a very great fucking that would be fucking great for sure. <laughs> yes, it would, it would. Podcast guess. <laughs> You're <laughs> Alright, so that's it for me. How is this experience for you overall? Me? Oh you're asking me? Yeah. <laughs> What was the question again? <laughs> how, was, how was your experience on the podcast? <laughs> so, I have this thing, alright. So, yo, this is, my, this is my first podcast. I was kind of excited. Because to me, I, I look at you... I look at you as a fucking, like... I look at, I look up to you, kind of, in a way. Uh, to me, you're a fucking celebrity, okay? That's what I, that's how I, that's how I feel. I'm, that's how I fucking feel, dude. That's how I feel. So, it's like... It's like, oh, I'm gonna be on a show with a podcast show with with Wilson Chang. Hey yo, hey yo, let's get it. You know, it's fucking lit. It was lit though. It was fucking lit. Um, mm -hmm. I never knew what a podcast was until fucking today. So I see that's what a podcast is. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. I, I it was fucking great. It was fucking great. You definitely, you're yo, you're an amazing guy, Wilson. I'm telling you, I gotta fucking compliment you, man. I got to. I just want you to fucking know you're whatever you're doing, you're doing a fucking sh amazing job. Not an amazing job, sh amazing job, man. You're doing you're fucking great. I just want you to know that, okay? Don't you ever Thanks, forget that. Man. Man. Okay, okay. <laughs> Don't you forget that. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, what's your favorite drink? Drink? Like as in like alcohol or fucking in general, like, in drink? general. Um I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna have to say between soju and sake. Yes. Okay. Soju and ash. <clears throat> All right. Cool. So that's that's a wrap. What are you planning to do after this? Oh, um, I'm planning to. So I have a group, my little forest group. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Shout out to Odeek. <laughs> Shout out to Icicle and Foot. Y'all, yeah, I'm about to play with them. <laughs> My little forest group. They're just okay. waiting for me to be finished. I'm like, yeah, you're going to get forest. Yeah, you can play with me. All right, I'm going to play out the pockets. Hey, yo, let's get it. <laughs> That's what I'm about to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Here, let me close this off for the YouTube segment, and then I'll let you go. All right, yeah, let's get it. All right. Folks, and that's a wrap for the Chang Gang Podcast episode 45 featuring Isaac, aka Papa Very Sunny. Isaac, thank you so much for dedicating time for this. It's been about three hours and 40 minutes. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's get it. Round of applause. <laughs> Thank you guys once again for tuning in and for watching. Make sure to drop him a follow on Twitch if you haven't already. His Instagram is on the bottom right. Do you have any last few words for everybody? You guys are fucking awesome. I love you. I don't care what you do. You're fucking awesome. That's it. Mic drop. Alright, you heard it. <laughs> and so yeah, make sure to give this video a thumbs up guys and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Tune in for the next episode, episode 46, coming soon. All right, peace <laughs> out, guys.